Inside the Mullen Center, let's take a look at today's starting lineups for LaSalle. You can see there a familiar starting five, the same they had this past weekend against Fordham. Isaiah Dees leads the way with just under 12 points per contest. Ed Croswell there, actually a forward at six foot eight, providing the most size for Ashley Howard's crew. Now for the Minutemen, what is becoming a familiar starting five, still with the absence of TJ Weeks, who remains inactive today. You've got Claire Jo, Diallo, East, Pierre, and Mitchell, and the Minutemen coming off that performance, as you mentioned, on Sunday, getting key performances from three or four of those players in that starting five. And the Minutemen logged a lot of minutes as we take a look at LaSalle Explorer head coach Ashley Howard in the second year. Jay, uh, assistant for Jay Wright at Villanova, having won two national titles as part of that program. He's also been an assistant at Drexel, LaSalle, and Xavier. And for the Minutemen, of course, head coach Matt McCall trying to figure out how to get things going in the right direction. 9-28 and 28 in his time here in conference play. So the Minutemen and LaSalle, this will be the first of two meetings and the regular season between these two teams. Trey Mitchell and Ed Croswell will meet at center stage. Who do we have officiating this bad boy today? We have Lamar Simpson, Wally Rutecki, and Rick Crawford. Jay, curious to see what the energy levels like for the Minutemen here early. They really rode the starting lineup in the second half of the game against St. Louis. A couple of guys logged 40 plus minutes, a couple guys in the high 30s. Let's see what the legs are like coming out in this one. Minutemen in the home white uniforms today. LaSalle in the navy blue. Fans filing through here as it's the first home conference game of the season for the Minutemen. Tap is up and won by LaSalle as the Explorers come out averaging just over 70 points per contest. And a 66-60 win this past weekend against Fordham. And immediately, David Beattie will turn it over on travel. Yeah, so. Beattie tried to drive that baseline, and he ran smack dab into Sean East and slammed on the brakes and skidded. Well, you mentioned the minutes. We'll talk about that throughout today's game. Sean East coming off that fine performance on Sunday against St. Louis. Low pressure here from LaSalle, something the Minutemen haven't seen a ton of this season. Probably see more of it in their own practices than they do against their opponents. Yeah, without a doubt. And actually, that's when things started to fall apart against St. Louis on Sunday when the Billikens started to ratchet up that pressure. Ten on the shot clock. Here's Mitchell going to work on Croswell. Mitchell double move. We've seen that time and time again. Can't get it to fall in the rebound here for LaSalle. He'll push it up ahead. Peary in transition finds Croswell, and Croswell can't connect. And it's out of bounds. Last touch by LaSalle. I think UMass caught a break there. Croswell was deep underneath the restricted arc. Hey, he had no angle whatsoever to get that shot off, and Miniman will take it. A little bit of a slow start to this game. LaSalle, when they press, Jay, it's a bit of a passive press. They're not going to get right up in your face, but it's certainly going to slow you down and slow down getting the half-court set once you do break it. UMass averaging 72 points a game, and a whistle coming as Miniman try to get it into Trey Mitchell. First foul on this one is Scott Spencer, the Clemson transfer. Well, LaSalle certainly read the scouting report on UMass doubling down on Trey Mitchell getting a little too physical with the big guy and LaSalle doesn't really have a good matchup with Mitchell so they're trying to put two guys on that means somebody else has to be open out there and that's where the Minutemen want to kick it out and find an open shooter from three-point range there's Mitchell on the wing he takes a mid-range jumper that's no good Croswell again with a rebound here for LaSalle over a minute into this one without a bucket so far Peary the Massachusetts native off the mark and loose ball found by Sean East East doesn't have the numbers into traffic. Going to take it anyway off the glass. No. And here comes LaSalle. Beattie out to Spencer. That just about. And that's up several percentage. Bit of a slow start to this game. LaSalle, when they press, Jay, it's a bit of a passive press. They're not going to get right up in your face, but it's certainly going to slow you down and slow down getting the half court set once you do break it. UMass averaging 72 points a game and a whistle coming as Minutemen try to get it into Trey Mitchell. First foul on this one is Scott Spencer, the Clemson transfer. Well, LaSalle certainly read the scouting report on UMass doubling down on Trey Mitchell, getting a little too physical with the big guy. And LaSalle doesn't really have a good matchup with Mitchell, so they're trying to put two guys on. That means somebody else has to be open out there. And that's where the Minutemen want to kick it out and find an open shooter from three-point range. Here's Mitchell on the wing. He takes a mid-range jumper. That's no good. Croswell again with a rebound here for LaSalle. Over a minute into this one without a bucket so far. Peary, Massachusetts native, off the mark. And loose ball found by Sean East. 
East doesn't have the numbers into traffic. Going to take it anyway off the glass. No. And here comes LaSalle. Beatty out to Spencer. Still nothing on the scoreboard. Diallo guarding Dees. Dees can score a couple of different ways in the paint. Little fadeaway. He does that so well. And Isaiah Dees gets us going here in the scoring today. Their guards do a nice job, Jay, in general of penetrating and making moves in the paint. They're not afraid to drive. And they've got four guards on the floor from 6'2 to 6'6. Six six, and Mitchell will draw the whistle on Croswell, which will be something we'll monitor throughout today's game. The one-on-one -on -one there for Mitchell and Croswell. Take a look at Isaiah Dees right here. Good patience, able to get... Diallo out of position with the pivot and a high arcing shot from the paint. How about Trey Mitchell on Sunday? That is incorrect. Nine for 11 from the free throw line. The foul was on Ed Croswell. And the first one is good for Mitchell. The Minutemen as a team, when it mattered on Sunday in that overtime loss, I mean, they hit their free throws. They were 19 out of 24 from the foul line, Jay, and Trey Mitchell's done a nice job improving his free throw game. He's got it up to 67% just about, and that's up several percentage points from the beginning of the season. Man, he misses on the second one. Peary with the rebound. Sal quickly gets through the pressure. And stepped out of bounds did Scott Spencer. will turn it over. Expect to see a few of those today. More 15 turnovers per game for LaSalle. The Minutemen are right there with mm. them as well in terms of turnovers, and that was one thing Coach McCall told us after that St. Louis game. They had learned to take care of the basketball yeah. better. Too many turnovers, especially when it counted. 25 in all. And still just lost by three in OT. Still without a bucket, however, here. Two and a half minutes in. Mitchell again going to work. Spinning, nice move off the glass. Trey Mitchell. Took Brandon Stone to school, and the Minutemen have their first lead at 3-2. to two. UMass force-feeding that ball to Trey Mitchell. I think every possession, he's had it in his hands, and they're trying to make him the focal point of their game plan tonight. Got that early foul on Croswell. They'll try to speed up LaSalle. Open shooter, Peary in the corner for three. He's lethal, missed it. Diallo getting the board. He had 14 rebounds in the last contest for the Minutemen. Continues to improve his rebounding ability. LaSalle really relies on the three-point ball. Against uh, Fordham, that's certainly what got them out to a huge start in the first half. It was a 9-0 run to begin the game, all three threes. That was their last game on Sunday where they beat the Rams down in the Bronx. Seven on the shot clock, East behind the back pass, and Diallo wasn't ready for it. The Minutemen will turn it over. You know, LaSalle's in their second conference game. They had a difficult one to open up conference play against Dayton. Dayton did what you might expect, an 84-58 victory. Minutemen, of course, will be at Dayton on Saturday yep. afternoon. We'll be there on the radio side, and that will be a beehive. 15th, several percentage points in the beginning of the season. Man, he misses on the second one. Peary with the rebound. Sal quickly gets through the pressure. And stepped out of bounds. Did Scott Spencer will turn it over. Expect to see a few of those today. More 15 turnovers per game for LaSalle. The Minutemen are right there with mm. them as well in terms of turnovers. And that was one thing Coach McCall told us after that St. Louis game. They had learned to take care of the basketball yeah. better. Too many turnovers, especially when it counted. 25 in all. And still just lost by three in OT. Still without a bucket, however, here. Two and a half minutes in. Mitchell again going to work, spinning, nice move off the glass. Trey Mitchell took Brandon Stone to school, and the Minutemen have their first lead at 3-2. to two. UMass force-feeding that ball to Trey Mitchell. I think every possession, he's had it in his hands, and they're trying to make him the focal point of their game plan tonight. Got that early foul on Croswell. They'll try to speed up LaSalle, open shooter. Peary in the corner for three. He's lethal, missed it. Diallo getting the board. He had 14 rebounds in the last contest for the Minutemen. Continues to improve his rebounding ability. LaSalle really relies on the three-point ball against uh, Fordham. That's certainly what got them out to a huge start in the first half. It was a 9-0 run to begin the game. All three threes. That was their last game on Sunday where they beat the Rams down in the Bronx. Seven on the shot clock. East behind the back pass, and Diallo wasn't ready for it. The Minutemen will turn it over. 
You know, LaSalle's in their second conference game. They had a difficult one to open up conference play against Dayton. Dayton did what you might expect, an 84-58 victory. Minutemen, of course, will be at Dayton on Saturday yep. afternoon. We'll be there on the radio side, and that will be a beehive. 15th ranked Flyers, 14,000 people in that building. Once we get the impression this is an important game for UMass. Spencer finds an open man, and Mitchell can't come over to help quickly. That's Hakeem with the bucket. Freshman off the bench who logs significant minutes. Good recognition by Spencer there, not to force a shot and find the open man. Tough pass, almost went over and back. Did UMass down by one? Three and a half into this one, again to the mismatch. Mitchell on Stone. Double team comes, forces up a shot, doesn't go, gets his own miss, and can't kick it out. He had three guys surrounding yeah. him. You get the feeling Mitchell's got to go strong to the basket. He's trying to back his way in kind of gingerly right now. Nice and move for Spencer here. He connects Scott Spencer with a bucket, a 37% three-point shooter. East quickly the other way with a floater. Something Sean East does so well, shooting off the drive and off the dribble like that and able to get that one to go. Quickly trying to nullify the run there for LaSalle. Yeah, East has that move down pat. LaSalle up by two. Here's Dees. Poke from behind by Diallo. He gathers and can't finish, but he'll head to the free throw line. As Dees gets the whistle on Keon Clairjot, which will be his first team first for the Minutemen. Sean East, the reigning rookie of the week with a floater for the Minutemen. UMass down by two. LaSalle to the line when we return. 15th ranked Flyers, 14,000 people in that building. Once we get the impression that this is an important game for UMass. Spencer finds an open man, and Mitchell can't come over to help quickly. That's Hakeem with the bucket. Freshman off the bench who logs significant minutes. Good recognition by Spencer there, not to force a shot and find the open man. Tough pass, almost went over and back. Did UMass down by one. Three and a half into this one. Again to the mismatch, Mitchell on Stone. Double team comes. Forces up a shot, doesn't go, gets his own miss, and can't kick it out. He had three guys surrounding yeah. him. You get the feeling Mitchell's got to go strong to the basket. He's trying to back his way in kind of gingerly right now. Nice and move for Spencer here, and he connects. Scott Spencer with a bucket, a 37% three-point shooter. East quickly the other way with a floater. Something Sean East does so well, shooting off the drive and off the dribble like that, and able to get that one to go. Quickly. Trying to nullify the run there for LaSalle. Yeah, East has that move down pat. LaSalle up by two. Here's Dees. Poke from behind by Diallo. He gathers and can't finish, but he'll head to the free throw line. As Dees gets the whistle on Keon Clairjot, which will be his first team first for the Minutemen. Sean East, the reigning rookie of the week with a floater for the Minutemen. UMass down by two. LaSalle to the line when we return.
LaSalle out to a 7-5 start here. First media timeout. Good to have that guy back for UMass here. Colton Mitchell, who was injured in the first game of the season, missed the rest of the non-conference slate. And uh, really got word, I think, the day before the last game that he was eligible to resume basketball activities and actually played significant minutes on Sunday against St. Louis. And there you can see just a couple of games so far for Colton, but can be an impact-type player, especially to take minutes away from only improve and, and get you know get himself back in the game shape and kind of get the feel it's almost like he's starting his season all over again as a freshman now you can see where's that light wrap on his left hand broke a bone in his wrist and you really try to give guys a spell and that's where we talked about the minutes with sean east and carl pierre both guys over 30 minutes per game first free throw is good there for d's d's about a 73 percent foul shooter and he gets them both Four-point lead here for LaSalle, and they will continue to pressure the basketball. Diallo does find Pierre. Pierre, by the way, will keep a track on him. He is approaching 1,000 points and could reach that milestone today if he gets 14. Here's East, finds Diallo, one hard dribble, got his man up into the air and can't convert on the end. One, but he'll head to the free throw line. Nice give and go play there. Good pass by East. Is Diallo able to find his way to the foul line? Did it been switching things up here, Jay, with Jerry Baptiste out there at the center and Tabaji Walker making his Mullen center debut? And how about the second foul on Ed Croswell just like that? Diallo hits the free throw. There's Tabaji Walker, the Cleveland yep. State transfer. Found out the day before in Akron that he was going to be able to play last Monday night. He's from Columbus, Ohio, so there he was all set to go in his home state. And he struggled a little bit. Again, he got, hasn't played a game since last March, so it's taking him a little bit to, to get his feet under him. But each and every game, I'm sure he'll improve. And yeah, Diallo hits them both. Yeah, Coach McCall said, look, we need to get Debaji Walker going, especially without T.J. Weeks and not sure if or when you're going to get T.J. Weeks back healthy. So... This is as a full strength as the Minutemen have been despite missing their leading score. Down by a bucket. Sal up with a basketball. Dees over to the left side. Hakeem. Hakeem lost it. Stolen by the Minutemen initially. And it'll stay. LaSalle basketball. Looked like East had it off the deck. I spoke too soon. The fans did not like that call. Neither did the UMass bench. Hakeem. Uh, been the last to touch from this vantage point. Kimbrough has checked into the game. We'll take another look at it here. And East had it off the feet of Hakeem, and it'll be LaSalle basketball. Yeah, Rick Crawford missed nope. that one. Into traffic. Spencer can't get it to fall. Altered by Baptiste Diallo into the open field. He'll pick it up and hold up for the rest of his troops here. And a man down by a bucket. Here's Pierre, some space over D's, and he connects 12 and counting to 1,000 for the captain, Pierre. Carl Pierre in the midst of a streak of six consecutive double-figure games, averaging 17 points over that stretch, Jay, and he's shooting 45% from three-point range over those half dozen. Yeah, how about the start of the season? Here's D's on Debaji Walker, and he'll draw the whistle as Walker went up into the air. Baptiste came over for the help there. The foul is going to be on Debaji, which would be his first. You know, the first five games, UMass went 5-0, and oh, and they didn't have Pierre kind of clicking on all cylinders. And as you just referenced there, he has certainly turned it up. Able to create some space there, step back, and hits that 18-19 footer. D's back to the line for LaSalle. And Carl Pierre, too, Jay, he's averaging almost 33 minutes a game. He's done exactly what you'd want a captain to do. He's a floor leader. He goes out there. He's hit some big shots in games to, to keep the minutemen in it, especially against Akron. He had a terrific game, and, you know, he really has gotten going here in the uh, middle part of the season. He sure has. Hakeem checks out. You see Ray comes in off the bench for LaSalle. And same with Sheriff Kenny, who missed the last two games with a wrist injury. Christian Ray, a spark plug for this LaSalle team comes off the bench, a freshman averaging five points a game, and he does a lot of little things, steals and rebounds, and they just called a five-second violation against the Minutemen not getting the ball in time. Well, the pressure for LaSalle affecting UMass there. Diallo couldn't find an open man. And back to the Explorers. Coming off a 10-win season right now, and a whistle on the loose ball will be on 
Jared Kimbrough, who saw extensive time in these two matchups last year. This LaSalle team has really kind of taken the pieces that they had. They've added a couple of transfers. They've been able to bring in some of the freshmen and have really built a pretty solid foundation here in year two under Ashley Howard. Hey, he's done a nice job getting all three components the mix, the transfers, the freshmen, and those that remain. And that's hard to do sometimes. You know, you have chemistry issues sometimes, especially with the coaching change. But it's so far worked out for the Explorers. UMass able to get it in and get it across here. Again, some suffocating pressure for the Explorers. 15 on the shot clock here as East sets things up of Sal Peary. Has some room. Finds Santos. Santos contested shot. Doesn't go, but he gets the whistle on Christian Ray, which would be his first foul. LaSalle amping up the defensive pressure a little bit. Getting in the Minutemen's faces there. and UMass able to get bailed out with a foul by Ray. Santos will head to the foul line. You don't see Santos, the freshman the Woodstock Academy product, kind of operating in that type of space. He's more of a kind of put-back, rebound type of guy, hustle-type player. But there had an angle on the drive, and he misses the free throw. And then now three for five from the foul line early, three for seven from the field. LaSalle, three, four, eight, but four for four from the foul line. I don't know if you recall this game last year, the second contest between these two teams, where UMass, by all statistical categories, should have won the game. They shot 16 of 71. Majority of those misses were layups in that loss at Tom Gola Arena. And Baptiste almost the takeaway again. East couldn't handle the deflection. Good job of denying the entry pass there for Baptiste. And now he'll check out and Trey Mitchell will come back on. He has been using Baptiste in four and five minute blocks a lot this season as a defender and as a rebounder. Without reach, he's been terrific to it, denying big guys the basketball as we just saw there. Yeah, his only problem is he's picked up some quick fouls over the past couple of the games. Kimbrough will throw it away. And he'll take that all day if you're UMass. LaSalle should have touched that because now UMass will get the ball right under the basket. Should have picked that up into the deep part of the front court instead or the top of the front court. Now nice. UMass, it's almost like a punt, Jay. UMass getting good field position. <laughs> Flip the field? Yeah. <laughs> Down by one, just about seven minutes into this one. In the first home game in Atlantic 10 play here for the Minutemen. We'll go on the road to Dayton and St. Bonaventure. In the next two contests, tough pass to Mitchell. Finds a wide open Santos who can't finish on a wide open look at a dunk. Draws the foul on Kimbrough, which would be his second. Great recognition by Mitchell seeing the double team, seeing it at a tough angle and able to get it to Santos. Kimbrough can't believe they called the foul on him. Like Kimbrough stuck his hand into the face of Santos and affected his ability to throw it down. Santos kind of Seeing the eyes as wide as saucers there. And a wide open dunk and he can't hit the free throw. Santos played 14 minutes on Sunday. Had a couple of points. See Claire Joe comes back in. Yeah, the taking charge machine, if you yeah. will. Keon Claire Joe back out there. And Colton Mitchell making his first appearance at Amherst since the season opener. But they're missing those dozen games with that arm injury, wrist injury. And Santos hits to tie us up. So kind of a unique lineup here for the Minutemen where you've got Walker and Mitchell, both guys really not getting a, being able to get a ton of reps so far this season. Wide open look from Kenny at the rim, and the Minutemen will take advantage here. Good job by Colton Mitchell yep. to come over and help on the baseline. There's Colton Mitchell. His touch over to the corner for Santos. The feed to Mitchell. Draws a crowd. Goes up and down with it. Oh, they call it jump. jump ball. I think he wanted a foul, obviously. You can see the despondent look on his face. Matt McCall did, too. It did appear to be some contact, but Miniman will keep possession of 17 on the shot clock. They're able to get the ball down low to Mitchell. He goes up, and he's also lucky he didn't call, get called for a travel. I agree. Game. You know what I, I think? Didn't, I didn't see a, a hand in a blue uniform on top of that ball. It should have been a travel. I think that was sort of kind of... Solomon's baby there, right? To make everybody happy. You could have called a foul or a travel, and you end up calling the jump ball. To Mitchell. 
And he's just going to dominate today down low if that's the matchup. He had a six foot two David Beatty on him in the previous possession. UMass up by a pair. And a foul up ahead as Colton Mitchell hits the deck hard. He'll pick up his first defense today. Here go. Here's Trey Mitchell with the ball. He'll hand it off to Colton Mitchell. Good little give and go again. And fighting through some contact was Trey Mitchell on his way to the basket. Trey Mitchell tonight off to a good start as he has six points. And it's the your pardon, five points. hesitation for Mitchell there. He's not too eager to just quickly go up with it. He's able to get his defenders off balance up in the air mopping delay here it really speaks to his athleticism and the control he has of his body that he's able to be so patient yeah, and he really, does a good job with his back to the basket too jay backing his way down and, and being so patient and not forcing shots but in a game like this i think he needs to go hard to the basket just because of the the size and athleticism advantage he does have and how about the way he handled hassan french on Sunday, one of the best big men in the Atlantic 10. You mass up by a pair. About eight minutes in. Here's Peary. Nice step back over to Baji Walker. Beautiful shot for Saul Peary. Brings back some tough memories from a year ago. Peary really dominated this series. Debaji Walker catch and shoot three. It's short. The rebound taken away by Ray. And Sal looking to build a little momentum here. Beatty on the pull-up. Beatty sinks it. And the Explorers back out on top by a pair. And Sal getting the outside game going with those tall guards. First Peary, then Beatty. And they're not afraid to shoot early and often. Then we saw Debaji Walker take that three on the last possession. I think I talked to head coach Matt McCall earlier today saying, need to try to figure out how they can get him going downhill. That was an ill-advised pass that almost was stolen by David Beatty. Right in front of the LaSalle bench will bring us to our under 12 minute media timeout. 11.22 to go here in the first half. Back and forth so far. LaSalle up by a pair on the UMass Sports Network. It'll stay LaSalle basketball. Looked like East had it off the deck. I spoke too soon. The fans did not like that call. Neither did the UMass bench. Hakeem uh, been the last to touch from this vantage point. Kimbrough has checked into the game. We'll take another look at it here. East had it off the feet of Hakeem, and it'll be LaSalle basketball. Yeah, Rick Crawford missed oh. that one. Into traffic. Spencer can't get it to fall. Altered by Baptiste Diallo into the open field. He'll pick it up and hold up for the rest of his troops here. And a man down by a bucket. There's Pierre, some space. Over D's, and he connects. 12 and counting to 1,000 for the captain, Pierre. Carl Pierre in the midst of a streak of six consecutive double-figure games, averaging 17 points over that stretch, Jay, and he's shooting 45% from three-point range over those half dozen. Yeah, how about the start to the season? Here's D's on Debaji Walker, and he'll draw the whistle as Walker went up into the air. Baptiste came over for the help there. The foul is going to be on Debaji, which would be his... First, you know, the first five games, UMass went 5-0, and oh, and they didn't have Pierre kind of clicking on all cylinders. And as you just referenced there, he has certainly turned it up. Able to create some space there, step back, and hits that 18-19 footer. D's back to the line for LaSalle. And Carl Pierre, too, Jay, he's averaging almost 33 minutes a game. He's done exactly what you'd want a captain to do. He's a floor leader. He goes out there. He's hit some big shots in games to, to keep the Minutemen in it, especially against Akron. He had a terrific game, and, you know, he really has gotten going here in the uh, middle part of the season. He sure has. Hakeem checks out. You see Ray comes in off the bench for LaSalle, and same with Sheriff Kenny, who missed the last two games with a wrist injury. Christian Ray, a spark plug for this LaSalle team comes off the bench, a freshman averaging five points a game, and he does a lot of little things, steals and rebounds, and they just called a five-second violation against the Minutemen not getting the ball in time. Well, the pressure for LaSalle affecting UMass there. Diallo couldn't find an open man. And back to the Explorers. Coming off a 10-win season right now, and a whistle on the loose ball will be on Jared Kimbrough, who saw extensive time in these two matchups last year. This LaSalle team has really kind of taken the pieces that they had. They've added a couple of transfers. They've been able to bring in some of the freshmen and have really built a pretty solid foundation here in year two under Ashley Howard. 
Yeah, he's done a nice job getting all three components the mix, the transfers, the freshmen, and those that remain. And that's hard to do sometimes. Yeah. You know, you have chemistry issues sometimes, especially at the coaching change, but it's so far worked out for the Explorers. UMass able to get it in and get it across here. Again, some suffocating pressure for the Explorers. 15 on the shot clock here as East sets things up on Sal Peary. Has some room. Finds Santos. Santos contested shot. Doesn't go, but he gets the whistle on Christian Ray, which would be his first foul. LaSalle amping up the defensive pressure a little bit. Getting in the Minutemen's faces there. and UMass able to get bailed out with a foul by Ray. Santos will head to the foul line. You don't see Santos, the freshman, the Woodstock Academy product, kind of operating in that type of space. He's more of a kind of put-back, rebound type of guy, hustle-type player. There had an angle on the drive, and he misses the free throw. And then now three for five from the foul line early, three for seven from the field. LaSalle, three, four, eight, but four for four from the foul line. I don't know if you recall this game last year, the second contest between these two teams, where UMass, by all statistical categories, should have won the game. They shot 16 of 71. Majority of those misses were layups in that loss at Tom Gola Arena. And Baptiste almost the takeaway again. East couldn't handle the deflection. Good job of denying the entry pass there for Baptiste. And now he'll check out and Trey Mitchell will come back on. You has been using Baptiste in four and five minute blocks a lot this season as a defender and as a rebounder. And without reach, he's been terrific too at denying big guys the basketball as we just saw there. Yeah, his only problem is he's picked up some quick fouls over the past couple of the games. Kimbrough will throw it away. And you'll take that all day if you're UMass. LaSalle should have touched that because now UMass will get the ball right under the basket. Should have picked that up into the deep part of the front court instead or the top of the front court. Now nice. UMass is almost like a punt, Jay. UMass getting good field position. <laughs> Flip the field? Yeah. <laughs> Down by one, just about seven minutes into this one. The first home game in Atlantic 10 play here for the Minutemen. We'll go on the road to Dayton and St. Bonaventure. In the next two contests, tough pass to Mitchell. Finds a wide open Santos who can't finish on a wide open look at a dunk. Draws the foul on Kimbrough, which would be his second. Great recognition by Mitchell seeing the double team, seeing it at a tough angle and able to get it to Santos. Kimbrough can't believe they called the foul on him. Like Kimbrough stuck his hand into the face of Santos and affected his ability to throw it down. Santos kind of seeing the eyes as wide as saucers there and a wide open dunk and he can't hit the free throw. Santos played 14 minutes on Sunday, had a couple of points. See Claire Joe comes back in. Yeah, the taking charge machine, if you yep. will. Keon Claire Joe back out there. And Colton Mitchell making his first appearance in Amherst since the season opener. But they're missing those dozen games with that arm injury, wrist injury. And Santos hits to tie us up. So kind of a unique lineup here for the Minutemen where you've got Walker and Mitchell, both guys really not getting game, being able to get a ton of reps so far this season. Wide open look from Kenny at the rim, and the Minutemen will take advantage here. Good job by Colton Mitchell oh, no. to come over and help on the baseline. There's Colton Mitchell. His touch over to the corner for Santos. The feed to Mitchell. Draws a crowd, goes up and down with it. Oh, they're going to call it jump? jump ball. I think he wanted a foul, obviously. You can see the despondent look on his face. Matt McCall did, too. It did appear to be some contact, but Miniman will keep possession of 17 on the shot clock. They're able to get the ball down low to Mitchell. He goes up, and he's also lucky he didn't call, get called for a travel. I agree. Jay. You know what I, I think? Didn't, I didn't see a, a hand in a blue uniform on top of that ball. It should have been a travel. I think that was sort of kind of Solomon's baby there, right, to make everybody happy. You could have called a foul or a travel, and you end up, Calling the jump ball to Mitchell. And he's just going to dominate today down low if that's the matchup. He had a six foot two David Beatty on him in the previous possession. UMass up by a pair. And a foul up ahead as Colton Mitchell hits the deck hard. He'll pick up his first defense today. Here go. Here's Trey Mitchell with the ball. He'll hand it off to Colton Mitchell. Good little give and go again. And fighting through some contact was Trey Mitchell on his way to the basket. 
Trey Mitchell tonight off to a good start as he has six points. And it's the your pardon, five points. hesitation for Mitchell there. He's not too eager to just quickly go up with it. He's able to get his defenders off balance up in the air. Mopping delay here. It really speaks to his athleticism and the control he has of his body that he's able to be so patient. Yeah, and he really, does a good job with this back to the basket too, Jay. Backing his way down and, and being so patient and not forcing shots. But in a game like this, I think he needs to go hard to the basket just because of the, the size and athleticism advantage he does have. And how about the way he handled Hassan French on Sunday? One of the best big men in the Atlantic 10. You mass up by a pair. About eight minutes in, here's Peary. Nice step back over to Baji Walker. Beautiful Saul shot Peary. for Saul Peary. Brings back some tough memories from a year ago. Where Peary really dominated this series. Debaji Walker catch and shoot three. It's short. The rebound taken away by Ray. LaSalle looking to build a little momentum here. Beatty on the pull-up. Beatty sinks it. And the Explorers back out on top by a pair. LaSalle getting the outside game going with those tall guards. First Peary, then Beatty. And they're not afraid to shoot early and often. And we saw Debaji Walker take that three on the last possession. I think I talked with head coach Matt McCall earlier today saying need to try to figure out how they can get him going downhill. That was an ill-advised pass that almost was stolen by David Beatty. Right in front of the LaSalle bench will bring us to our under 12-minute media timeout. 11.22 to go here in the first half. Back and forth so far. LaSalle up by a pair on the UMass Sports Network. Oh, 11.22 to go here in the first half. LaSalle up by two. You can see the Explorers, they don't really lean on any one player in particular. Ed Croswell with two fouls will probably sit for the majority of this rest of this first half there. But, Adam, you can see how they share the minutes where you've got seven guys averaging over 20-plus minutes per game. And those first some minutes here in the first half, we also saw in that main game, C.J. Jackson. There you can see Ashley Howard in his second season, an impressive resume for him prior to coming to back to LaSalle, I should say. Well, he picked up a couple of national titles. That'll as a do well, huh? Top <laughs> deputy to Jay Wright across town at Villanova. Drexel alumnus. Of course, Villanova had a tussle with LaSalle in that big five matchup earlier this year. Only beat him by about 10. LaSalle gave the, the Wildcats a good battle. That's a fun tournament, the big five. Here's East with one second on the shot clock, and he sinks it. What patience and poise. He's able to get Peary up in the air. Found just a little bit of daylight. Hits that one. That wasn't the ideal shot you were looking for, but the Minutemen go up by one, and now Santos with the steal. And LaSalle able to get back. Here's East. East drives. East runs right into traffic. And is called for the charge. Sheriff Kenny takes the stand. And Sean East is just about to launch into a jump stop before he took the charge there and here's him with the basket 
And again, able to get his man up in the air, just able to get that crease and hits the three-pointer in the nick of time. You know, I think at the beginning of the year, we talked, of course, and rightfully so, how great Weeks and Pierre. Here's a good take from Sheriff Kenny. Right to the hoop, his first bucket today. But East might be an underrated three-point shooter. 36% on the season. Triple team for Mitchell. Mitchell kicks it out to Claire Joe. Wide open for the three. Off the back of the rim. Rebound for Pierre. He'll take it as well. And it's good for the captain, Pierre. Carl Pierre wide open on that offensive rebound. The Minutemen able to catch LaSalle. Everybody trying to surround Trey Mitchell. Open look in the corner for three for Ray. That's off the mark. And the Minutemen with a two-point lead in the basketball. Halfway through here in half number one. Of course, Mitchell a focal point with Croswell out as well. He's got D's on him, spinning, left it short. Mitchell hasn't had the touch today. Around the basket, D's the other way. Hesitation, drive, swatted by Pierre, and it's out of bounds on the block from Carl Pierre. Pierre did a nice job coming over, Jay, to help out. And as East was over there, Pierre came in at the last second, swatted that one out of bounds. Carl Pierre doing a little bit of everything. You don't think of him as a shot blocking machine, but a smart player able to help out on defense. Well, you go back to the game against Akron for Pierre. He had his first career double double, 10 rebounds. Again, another close loss for UMass. That's been the theme in the last 10 games or so. Dees gets around East. He lays it in. He's up to eight points today. We're tied at 19. Quickly up ahead to Pierre. There's such an advantage here for Trey Mitchell in the post. Of course, head coach Matt McCall knows that. Claire Joe careening through the lane. A wild shot. Spotted up by the right hand. It falls and one for Claire Joe. Again, taking advantage of the overplay on Trey Mitchell. Key on Claire Joe. He's not afraid to drive to the basket hard. Here he is at the basketball. Able to just knife his way through a couple of defenders. Draws the contact and able to get the ball to go. Je ne sais quoi for Claire Joe. First foul on Isaiah Dees. Claire Joe has just been such a fun player to watch for the Minutemen over the past couple of seasons. The Memphis transfer. One of the better defenders that you'll see in the Atlantic 10. He leaves it all on the yep. court quite literally in some cases. Sometimes you want him charts. to dial it back a little bit. The way he gives up his body. You see him hit the deck. He, he hopes sometimes he gets up because he... A few times he's had just some nasty spills this season. It's a three-point lead for the Minutemen, their largest of the day. Just over nine to go here in the first half. Dees by Diallo. Dees, the floater, and it goes down. It's Isaiah Dees. Started 22 games last year for the South. East in transition, almost threw it away. Clergeau saves it and throws it off the chest of Scott Spencer. That is a possession saved by Clergeau on a tough pass from Sean East. He eats a little bit out of control, breaking to the basket. As you see Dees here pulling up before Trey Mitchell could get there and able to get the floater to go. Dees averaging almost 12 points a game this season, shooting 41%. Ashley Howard having a word with Lamar Simpson, the official. And Dees can throw one in from long distance as well, 35% from long range. Had a good day shooting yeah. the ball from outside against Fordham on Sunday. One point lead here for UMass, 10 on the shot clock, and a travel called on Keon Clairjot. And we saw a little bit too much of that, not from Clairjot per se, but 10 travels in all for the Minutemen on Sunday. And that's their fifth turnover as Clairjot couldn't keep that pivot foot nailed to the ground. Colton Mitchell come back in to give Sean East a rest, and they'll get Trey Mitchell a rest here as well, of course, for about 41 seconds from the next media timeout. So Coach McCall trying to get those guys an extended rest. Trying to take care of their minutes. He's trying to steal some minutes here. LaSalle looking to retake the lead. Akeem dumps it off to John. John, his shot is short. Let's see a little bit what Colt, of what Colton Mitchell can do here. Very good with the basketball. Heady player. He dumps it down to Baptiste to miss the wide open shot. Trying to do a little too much with it there. Step for D's and don't call him for the steps. Yeah, Colton Mitchell did a good job getting back on defense. And shut D's off, didn't give him any room to operate, and forced to travel. It's almost like on that shot attempt that Jerry Baptiste didn't believe how much space he had and rushed it a little bit. Surprised how wide open he was. Sort of like the Preston Santos missed dunk 
earlier in this half. You'd like to see a little bit more offense from Jerry at some point. So we have that kick ball. You know, Jerry Baptiste rebounds well. He's only he's averaging less than two points a game as we head into this timeout. UMass basketball winner returns 7.57 to go in half number one. It's a tight one from the Mullen Center. Of course, Mitchell a focal point with Croswell out as well. He's got D's on him, spinning, left it short. Mitchell hasn't had the touch today. Around the basket, D's the other way. Hesitation, drive, swatted by Pierre. And it's out of bounds on the block from Carl Pierre. Pierre did a nice job coming over, Jay, to help out. And as East was over there, Pierre came in at the last second, swatted that one out of bounds. Carl Pierre doing a little bit of everything. You don't think of him as a shot blocking machine, but a smart player able to help out on defense. Well, you go back to the game against Akron for Pierre. He had his first career double double, 10 rebounds. Again, another close loss for UMass. That's been the theme in the last 10 games or so. Dees gets around East. He lays it in. He's up to eight points today. We're tied at 19. Quickly up ahead to Pierre. There's such an advantage here for Trey Mitchell in the post. Of course, head coach Matt McCall knows that. Claire Joe careening through the lane. A wild shot. Spun it up with a right hand. It falls and one for Claire Joe. Again, taking advantage of the overplay on Trey Mitchell. Keon clears Joe. He's not afraid to drive to the basket hard. Here he is with the basketball, able to just knife his way through a couple of defenders, draws the contact, and able to get the ball to go. Je ne sais quoi for Claire Joe. First foul on Isaiah Dees. Claire Joe has just been such a fun player to watch for the Minutemen over the past couple of seasons. The Memphis transfer. One of the better defenders that you'll see in the Atlantic 10. He leaves it all on the court, yep. quite literally in some cases. Sometimes you want him charges. to dial it back a little bit, the way he gives up his body. You see three. him hit the deck. You he, he hope sometimes he gets up because he, a few times he's had just some nasty spills this season. It's a three-point lead for the Minutemen, their largest of the day. Just over nine to go here in the first half. Dees by Diallo. Dees, the floater, and it goes down. It's Isaiah Dees. Started 22 games last year for LaSalle. East in transition, almost threw it away. Clergeau saves it and throws it off the chest of Scott Spencer. That is a possession saved by Clergeau on a tough pass from Sean East. Hey, East a little bit out of control, breaking to the basket. As you see Dees here pulling up before Trey Mitchell could get there and able to get the floater to go. Dees averaging almost 12 points a game this season, shooting 41%. Ashley Howard having a word with Lamar Simpson, the official. Dees can throw one in from long distance as well, 35% from long range. Had a good day shooting yeah. the ball from outside against Fordham on Sunday. One-point lead here for UMass, 10 on the shot clock, and a travel called on Keon Clairjeau. And we saw a little bit too much of that, not from Clairjeau per se, but 10 travels in all for the Minutemen on Sunday. And that's their fifth turnover as Claire Joe couldn't keep that pivot foot nailed to the ground. See Colton Mitchell come back in to give Sean East a rest, and they'll get Trey Mitchell a rest here as well, of course, for about 41 seconds from the next media timeout. So Coach McCall trying to get those guys an extended rest, trying to take care of their minutes. He's trying to steal some minutes here. LaSalle looking to retake the lead. Hakeem dumps it off to John. John, his shot is short. See a little bit what Colt, of what Colton Mitchell can do here. Very good with the basketball. Heady player. He dumps it down to Baptiste to miss the wide open shot. Tried to do a little too much with it there. Up step for Dees, and they'll call him for the steps. Yeah, Colton Mitchell did a good job getting back on defense. And shut Dees off, didn't give him any room to operate, and forced the travel. It's almost like on that shot attempt that Jerry Baptiste didn't believe how much space he had. And Rushed it a little bit. Surprised how wide open he was. Sort of like the Preston Santos missed dunk earlier in this half. You'd like to see a little bit more offense from Jerry at some point. So you have that kick ball. You know, Jerry Baptiste rebounds well. But he's only he's averaging less than two points a game as we head into this timeout. UMass basketball winner returns 7.57 to go in half number one. It's a tight one from the Mullen Center.
Oh, the UMass Minutemen have the Rookie of the Week award in the A-10 on lock. Sean East this past week awarded his second Rookie of the Week award. They've got four in all between Weeks, Mitchell, and East. Again, unfortunately, Weeks is out. But this will tell you a little bit about where the, you know, the cornerstones are for this program going forward, Adam. Certainly. Jay, you know, they have, you know, they know how to handle the ball and can score. You know, that's certainly a great place to start. And don't uh, forget to get Carl Pierre yeah, for well, another year, too. That helps that to have hurt. a junior that's played significant games and starts over the course of his career. As we mentioned, a rapidly approaching 1,000 points. Should get that today. UMass up by one, and they'll keep East on the bench here. Use Colton Mitchell coming out of this timeout. And you can see Mustafa Jun in there on Mitchell, and Mitchell with a turnaround hook goes down over Jun. That's a good move by Mitchell. Not messing around and just going hard to the basket, getting that hook shot to go. You know, I think that's one thing Trey Mitchell's going to recognize here he's got that size advantage it's croswell out go hard to the basket do things quickly john the western kentucky grad transfer from senegal two players from the same town in senegal in this game of course sama diallo for the minutemen spencer with a little fadeaway goes down good veteran move by spencer on the pivot able to get colton mitchell up in the air i feel like if you're looking at this from the umass perspective this should be a bigger lead than just one point at the moment. Both teams shooting the ball well, though, at 50% yep. each. And here comes help, and it's stolen by John, but he steps on the line. John just his fourth game. You can see there the big body didn't play a ton at Western Kentucky. They're going to reset the shot clock, I think, Jay. I don't believe they're going to call this possession for LaSalle, and they do put it at 14 seconds. Let's see Rick Crawford explaining that to Colton Mitchell. Let's see if the Minutemen are mindful of that. Having a hard time getting it in, and it goes to Diallo. Hard fought inbound there to Samba Diallo. Well, Sal's been guarding hard off the yep. inbound, already forcing a five second call tonight. Five to shoot here for UMass. Back pass to Diallo. Puts it on the deck. Diallo, tough shot falling down, doesn't go, and Mitchell, both of them. Mitchell's crashing the boards, and it's out of bounds on UMass. Looked like they hurt each other on that one, yeah. Jay. They both were going after the ball, and I think one of them would have pulled it in, but it looked like they banged into each other a little bit. Gives you the kind of idea of what type of player Colton Mitchell is going to be. And the drive for Kenny. Almost got hung up. Now Beatty. Dees has been the go-to here for LaSalle. And he drives into Mitchell, dumps it off to John, and he missed the bunny. Loose ball picked up by East. Both teams have missed some close ones here early on. Just over six to go. East, coast to coast, dumps it off to Mitchell. And a tough pass in traffic. Out to Dees now. Pierre, last man standing, and a dunk for Spencer. Scott Spencer's up to seven. LaSalle back in front. Now to Diallo, who draws the foul and one. An acrobatic shot for Diallo as Dees went back on defense. And Diallo will head to the free throw line. Both teams operating well in transition in that sequence. And Samba Diallo got behind that LaSalle defense, caught that basketball, and able to fight through the contact. It's the hometown roll. He'll find himself at the foul line. Samba Diallo this season, about a 63% foul shooter. Had his first career double-double the last game against St. Louis. 14 rebounds. I stand corrected that. Fouls on David Beatty, his first. Been a minute, six out of nine from the foul line tonight. And that has been something they've improved upon over the past five games or so. Obviously going to need those down the stretch. The three is short for Beatty. There comes Diallo, another board. We got East and Colton Mitchell on the floor at the same time to Trey Mitchell. He gets it deep. Trey Mitchell missed the close one again. Diallo hustling, gets the loose ball. Diallo throws up another tough shot. That doesn't go, and it's out of bounds. Last touch by LaSalle. That is what Samba Diallo was doing time and time again on Sunday, keeping plays alive, and he does that here for the Minutemen. Sneaking in down the left side, able to get that one after Mitchell missed, and the men have 20 seconds here to work with. Again, having trouble getting it in. They get it to Diallo. 
Tough move for Diallo. Had it blocked underneath. Dees picks it up. Thought he fought through some contact. I agree. Too. Kenny draws the whistle on Sean East. And picks up his second foul. That's a guy you cannot afford to have in foul trouble. Your point guard who averages better than 30 minutes a game. And he may be taking a seat as Debaji Walker heads to the scorer's table. Coach McCall realizing that he doesn't want to pick up three on East in the first half. Yeah, it's interesting you see the swap here. And we've talked to the head coach Matt McCall about this. But Debaji Walker can play as that two or three. He's only six foot nine, but really checks in as a guard. With incredible length, Kenny with a three, swish. There's Sheriff Kenny. Got five. Here's Debaji Walker, baseline Debaji, and he, he's called for the offensive foul. Dees draws it. Second foul on Debaji Walker. Dees doing a great job cutting off the baseline and getting there in time. Walker didn't realize it, plowed right through him. So the UMass backcourt getting him himself a getting themselves in the foul trouble. Now, Keon Claire Joe will come back in. Walker drove by his one man, and there was Dees right there in perfect guarding position just outside the halo. I want to see Debaji Walker be aggressive, but there Dees outsmarted him. Kenny, bounce pass in the post. It's jumped on by Claire Joe. He's on the deck every other player, so it seems. Down by one. Gotta get Mitchell the ball. Diallo takes a deep shot. It's good for three for Samba Diallo. He'll take that. Mitchell was wide open in the paint at a mismatch. Here's a steal by Pierre. And Pierre floats it through in the Minutemen on a 5 nothing run here quickly. And Ashley Howard wants a timeout. Well, that was a rapid approach here. A three-point shot made by the unloaded. Five to shoot here for UMass. Back pass to Diallo. Puts it on the deck. Diallo, tough shot falling down. Doesn't go. And Mitchell, both of them, Mitchell's crashing the boards. And it's out of bounds on UMass. Looked like they hurt each other on that one, no. Jay. They both were going after the ball. And I think one of them would have pulled it in. But it looked like they banged into each other a little bit. Gives you the kind of idea of what type of player Colton Mitchell is going to be. And the drive for Kenny. Almost got hung up. Now Beatty. Dees has been the go-to here for LaSalle. And he drives into Mitchell, dumps it off to Jun, and he missed the bunny. Loose ball picked up by East. Both teams have missed some close ones here early on. Just over six to go. East, coast to coast, dumps it off to Mitchell. And a tough pass in traffic. Out to Dees now. Pierre, last man standing, and a dunk for Spencer. Scott Spencer's up to seven. LaSalle back in front. Now to Diallo, who draws the foul and one. An acrobatic shot for Diallo as Dees went back on defense. And Diallo will head to the free throw line. Both teams operating well in transition in that sequence. And Samba Diallo got behind that LaSalle defense, caught that basketball, and able to fight through the contact. It's the hometown roll. He'll find himself at the foul line. Samba Diallo this season, about a 63% foul shooter. Had his first career double-double the last game against St. Louis. 14 rebounds. I stand corrected that. Fouls on David Beatty, his first. Then it meant six out of nine from the foul line tonight. And that has been something they've improved upon over the past five games or so. Obviously going to need those down the stretch. The three is short for Beatty. There comes Diallo, another board. We've got East and Colton Mitchell on the floor at the same time to Trey Mitchell. He gets it deep. Trey Mitchell missed the close one again. Diallo hustling, gets the loose ball. Diallo throws up another tough shot. That doesn't go, and it's out of bounds. Last touch by LaSalle. That is what Samba Diallo was doing time and time again on Sunday, keeping plays alive, and he does that here for the Minutemen. Sneaking in down the left side, able to get that one after Mitchell missed, and the men have 20 seconds here to work with. Again, having trouble getting it in. They get it to Diallo. Tough move for Diallo. Had it blocked underneath. Dees picks it up. Thought he fought through some contact, I agree. Too. Kenny draws the whistle on Sean East. Picks up his second foul. That's a guy you cannot afford to have in foul trouble. Your point guard who averages better than 30 minutes a game. And he may be taking a seat as Debaji Walker heads to the scorer's table. 
Coach uh, McCall realizing that he's going to pick up three on East in the first half. Yeah, it's interesting you see the swap here, and we talked to the head coach Matt McCall about this, but Debaji Walker can play as that two or three, you know, six foot nine, but really checks in as a guard with incredible length. Kenny with a three, swish. There's Sheriff Kenny got five. Here's Debaji Walker, baseline Debaji, and he, he's called for the offensive foul. Dees draws it. Second foul on Debaji Walker. Dees doing a great job cutting off the baseline and getting there in time. Walker didn't realize it, plowed right through him. So the UMass backcourt getting themselves with getting themselves in the foul trouble. Now Keon Clear Joe will come back in. Walker drove by his one man, and there was Dees right there in perfect guarding position just outside the halo. I want to see Debaji Walker be aggressive, but there Dees outsmarted him. Kenny, bounce pass in the post. It's jumped on by Claire Joe. He's on the deck every other player, so it seems. Down by one. Got to get Mitchell the ball. Diallo takes a deep shot. It's good for three for Samba Diallo. You'll take that. Mitchell was wide open in the paint at a mismatch. Here's a steal by Pierre. And Pierre floats it through in the Minutemen on a 5-0 run here quickly. And Ashley Howard wants a timeout. Well, that was a rapid approach here. A three-point shot made by the unlikeliest of characters, Samba Diallo. And then Pierre, the steal and the score. UMass up 32-28. Well, seesaw affair here. The Minutemen on a 5-0 run as a timeout's called by Ashley Howard of LaSalle. Score's been tied four times. We've had 11 lead changes there. You can see Captain Carl Pierre counting down to 1,000 points. He's seven away. The fact you're truly trying to get the ball to Trey Mitchell. And you look at the stat sheet for the Minutemen. It's really a balanced sheet. Diallo has eight. He had seven from Mitchell and Pierre and five from Sean East. So... A good spread out stat sheet for the Minutemen. And the Minutemen have benefited from only a couple of minutes from Ed Croswell today for LaSalle. Really their best big, beady pull-up jumper is good. He's got four. And the junior out of Philadelphia. There are those LaSalle guards again penetrating, able to get shots off in the paint. They're aggressive. They're not afraid to do that. Kind of an old school mentality. They're physical. They like the mid-range jumper. Here's Colton Mitchell into traffic. Lost it. Spencer the steal the other way. You mentioned it, Jay. The mid-range jumper is something that's kind of a four-letter word to some yeah, coaches these days. I know. A nice move from Isaiah Dees. A lot of teams of programs have gotten away from that, but LaSalle with a guard-oriented team, you know, they've embraced it and it's been working for them. How about four straight points coming out of the timeout? And we are tied at 32. Again, looking to get it into Mitchell, not there. Pierre hoists up a three left wing, indeed. Carl Pierre, four for four, shooting. And now 10 points on the night as he gets ever closer to 1,000. Sweet release for 
Pierre, now Spencer tries to retaliate. That goes halfway down and out. No luck there for Scott Spencer. Good job by Mitchell closing him out in the corner. Diallo feeling it. He'll take another three. Why not? Eh, that's why. Samba has hit some big threes, including last year against Davidson from the right corner, but not exactly the guy you want. Let him go from long range. There's a certain amount of discipline involved in shot yep. selection, too. He said I hit the first one. Why not? Colton Mitchell going for the steal. Almost had it. Beatty able to recover. Seven on the shot clock here for LaSalle. Dees will take a deep three. Dees bricks it. Doesn't touch the rim. And Miniman with a rebound. Colton Mitchell. You can see we talked about him earlier with that wrap around his left wrist. Still trying to kind of get that arm back to full force. Really impressed with his ball handling skills. Diallo has it blocked by Peary. Cut by the first man. Good help defense from Saul Peary. Comes over for the SWAT. Now Dees back to work. Spinning in the paint and he will turn it over. He's looking for a man on the weak side. Didn't have it. But you watch Colton Mitchell handle the basketball. You know, he's very confident dribbler, very strong dribbler. They get the ball down low here to Samba Diallo, and Dee's doing a great job coming over to help out. Or rather, there was Peary coming over to help out Dee's on that block. I think Samba thought he had a wide open look once he got by his man and was surprised to find Peary there. And the senior, initially from Zimbabwe, moved to Massachusetts at the age of three and has haunted the Minutemen in a couple of the games. You can see the women won earlier today. Nine in a row for the minute women. We've got a whistle off the basketball. Look up beyond Trey Mitchell fighting for position down in the post. And it'll be the first foul on Trey. He was jostling with Saul Peary and got caught for the offensive foul as Jerry Baptiste will come and dispel him. And Trey Mitchell a little frustrated by that call. Having a word with Lamar Simpson. We've seen Trey get called for some of those hooking fouls where the hook in the hole yep. is a big one that they've been keeping an eye on this Sometimes year. Sometimes when he's got the ball and he tries to seal off along the baseline, he'll wrap his arm around the waist of the defender. Santos gets away with a bump here. 20 on the shot clock. Stone in the paint. Nowhere to go. Baptiste smothers him. Kick out to Beatty for three. He'll take it, and it's good. David Beatty's got seven. We are tied at 35. The Minutemen haven't been able to get any breathing room here. Approaching the final minute here in half number one. Claire Joe navigating. Claire Joe no luck. And Beattie with the rebound. Skip pass up ahead, and it's stolen by Preston Santos. Looking for Brandon Stone. Final minute here. Big possession here for the Minutemen. He wanted some confidence. He wanted to go to the locker room with a lead. And that's something that they've struggled to do over the last several games. No, without a doubt. Here's Pierre. Hand in his face for three. Indeed. The captain, Carl Pierre, one shy of 1,000. And he gives the Minutemen a three-point lead. That was not an open look for Carl Pierre. But it was a confident shot. And he's got that high arcing pretty release going right now, Jay. He's in a great spot. He's out here at 10.30 in the morning working on that exact same shot. Final 18 seconds. Hakeem will take a three. That's bricked. An opening here for the Minutemen. Eight seconds. Pierre spinning. Five seconds. Pull up three to end it. It's good. Number 1,000 for Carl Pierre. And he gives the Minutemen their largest lead of the game, 41 to 35. A little opening for the captain. And Pierre ends it in fine fashion. A cover seven on the shot clock here for LaSalle. Dees will take a deep three. Dees bricks it, doesn't touch the rim, and Minutemen with a rebound. Colton Mitchell, you can see we talked about him earlier with that wrap around his left wrist. Still trying to kind of get that arm back to full force. Really impressed with his ball handling skills. Diallo has it blocked by Peary. Cut by the first man. Good help defense from Saul Peary. Comes over for the SWAT. Now Dees back to work. Spinning in the paint and he will turn it over. He's looking for a man on the weak side. Didn't have it. 
But you watch Colton Mitchell handle the basketball. You know, he's very confident dribbler, very strong dribbler. They get the ball down low here to Samba Diallo, and Dee's doing a great job coming over to help out, or rather, there was Peary coming over to help out Dee's on that block. I think Samba thought he had a wide open look once he got by his man and was surprised to find Peary there, the senior. Initially from Zimbabwe, moved to Massachusetts at the age of three and has haunted the Minutemen in a couple of the games. You can see the women won earlier today. Nine in a row for the Minute Women. We've got a whistle off the basketball. That got to be on Trey Mitchell fighting for position down in the post. That'll be the first foul on Trey. He was jostling with Saul Peary and got caught for the offensive foul as Jerry Baptiste will come and dispel him. And Trey Mitchell a little frustrated by that call. Having a word with Lamar Simpson. I've seen Trey get called for some of those hooking fouls where... The hook in the hold yep. is a big one that they've been keeping an eye on this Sometimes year. Sometimes when he's got the ball and he tries to seal off along the baseline, he'll wrap his arm around the waist of the defender. Santos gets away with a bump here. 20 on the shot clock. Stone in the paint, nowhere to go. Baptiste smothers him. Kick out to Beatty for three. He'll take it, and it's good. David Beatty's got seven. We are tied at 35. The Minutemen haven't been able to get any breathing room here. Approaching the final minute here in half number one. Claire Joe navigating. Claire Joe, no luck. And Beatty with the rebound. Skip pass up ahead, and it's stolen by Preston Santos. Looking for Brandon Stone. Final minute here. Big possession here for the Minutemen. He wanted some confidence. He wanted to go to the locker room with the lead, and that's something that they've struggled to do over the last several games. No, without a doubt. Here's Pierre, hand in his face for three. Indeed, the captain, Carl Pierre, one shy of 1,000, and he gives the Minutemen a three-point lead. That was not an open look for Carl Pierre. But it was a confident shot, and he's got that high arcing pretty release going right now, Jay. He's in a great spot. He's out here at 10.30 in the morning working on that exact same shot. Final 18 seconds. Hakeem will take a three. That's Brick. An opening here for the Minutemen. Eight seconds. Pierre spinning. Five seconds. Pull up three to end it. It's good. Number 1,000 for Carl Pierre. And he gives the Minutemen their largest Lead of the game, 41 to 35. A little opening for the captain to develop that secondary score. That guy that can get you 10 and 12 points a game to help take the load off of uh, East Pierre and Trey Mitchell. Now that's what Samba Diallo was the first five games of the year. Quickly, it's Peary knocking down a three. And if you're UMass, you don't want to see him get hot. He's got five. Well, Sal is a way of string three-pointers together. Just ask Fordham the way they did in the first half on Sunday. And Sal shooting 35% from three. And the entry pass is knocked away by Beattie. Beattie will get it back, and Beattie will lay it in. And all of a sudden, it's one point. And the differentiation here, 41-40. It's been kind of the theme all night long as UMass gets a little bit of a run going, and LaSalle always hasn't had an answer to this point. It's not what head coach Matt McCall was hoping for there. LaSalle using a bit more of a passive press to open the second half. Sean East back out there, Jay. He was out with the uh, two fouls for about the last five minutes of the half as they feed Mitchell. Easy feed for Mitchell. Keep doing that. A good yep. aggressive move by Mitchell if you're UMass. You know, just go right to the basket. There's no need. He's faced so many tough big guys. He has to kind of back his way in and be patient like Hassan French for St. Louis, but not so here tonight. He needs to impose his will. Beattie trying to get hot. Offensive board for Croswell. Nice feed back to Beattie and a blocking foul called on Carl Pierre as he stepped up into the lane. Yeah, you're right. It's almost a, kind of a, a different song you're trying to sing here if you're Mitchell. With the type of player you're taking on, and that looked like a charge. There. To, yeah, me too. Like a charge to me, Jay. Pierre had his feet, his knees bent, but it looked like he was in legal guarding position outside that semicircle. Officials didn't see it that way, however. But you're right, though, Mitchell. You know, you think about some of the big guys he's faced this season, and you know, particularly over that December, the Minutemen really faced uh, some great competition. 
different story here. And, you know, as a freshman, I think he just has to recognize that. Rebounds per game and over two offensive rebounds per game and doing so now without some of the depth for LaSalle or some of the bigs, I should say, for the Sal and foul trouble, including Ed Croswell, who only played a handful of minutes in half number one. And it's good for the Minutemen to develop that secondary score, that guy that can get you 10 and 12 points a game to help take the load off of uh, East Pierre and Trey Mitchell. Now that's what Samba Diallo was the first five games of the year. Quickly, it's Peary knocking down a three, and if you're UMass, you don't want to see him get hot. He's got five. Well, Sal is a way of string three-pointers together. Just ask Fordham the way they did in the first half on Sunday. And it's Sal shooting 35% from three. And the entry pass is knocked away by Beattie. Beattie will get it back, and Beattie will lay it in. And all of a sudden, it's one point. And the differentiation here, 41-40. It's been kind of the theme all night long as UMass gets a little bit of a run going. And LaSalle always hasn't had an answer to this point. It's not what head coach Matt McCall was hoping for there. LaSalle using a bit more of a passive press to open the second half. Sean East back out there, Jay. Was out with the uh, two fouls for about the last five minutes of the half as they feed Mitchell. Easy feed for Mitchell. Keep doing that. A good yep. aggressive move by Mitchell if you're UMass. You know, just go right to the basket. There's no need. He's faced so many tough big guys. He has to kind of back his way in and be patient like Hassan French for St. Louis, but not so here tonight. He needs to impose his will. Beattie trying to get hot offensive board for Croswell. Nice feed back to Beattie and a blocking foul called on Carl Pierre as he stepped up into the lane. Yeah, you're right. It's almost a, kind of a, a different song you're trying to sing here if you're Mitchell. With the type of player you're taking on, and that looked like a charge. There. Yeah, me too. Like a charge to me, Jay. Pierre and his feet, his knees bent, but it looked like he was in legal guarding position outside that semicircle. Officials didn't see it that way, however. But you're right, though, Mitchell. You know, you think about some of the big guys he's faced this season, and you know, particularly over that December, the Minutemen really faced uh, some great competition. Different story here, and you know, as a freshman, I think he just has to recognize that. Mitchell already with nine points. Beattie, a 67% free throw shooter, hits the second one. He's in the double figures. It's a two-point game. Again, pressure on the ball. East able to get across. Watches the back tap on Peary. And Sean East, one of the best distributors as a freshman in the nation. Again into the post on Croswell this time. Mitchell, hard dribbles. Mitchell, left-hand hook. Mitchell into double figures. Croswell playing like a guy with two fouls who didn't want to pick up the third. Mitchell certainly took advantage it of it. Almost reminds you when UMass had two quick fouls on Trey Mitchell in that Akron game. Sal moves the ball well. Two minutes in here into the second half. Ten to shoot for the Explorers. Nothing happening here for LaSalle on the offensive end. Dees is going to go one-on-one -on, -one on Pierre. Nice step back for Dees. It's short. And Diallo able to secure another rebound. He's got six so far tonight. Just a bunch of passes around the three-point line that set for LaSalle. And Dees had to fling something up at the buzzer. Good defense by the Minutemen. He's probing the defense out to Pierre. Nice pass to Claire Joe. He's in the paint. Claire Joe attacks. And Claire Joe will get the blocking foul. So maybe... Turnabout fair play on that blocking foul on Carl Pierre moments ago. These two teams similar in, in the respects that they like to take a lot of charges and they like to press. You know, a lot of hard work sort of things that you see for both of these squads. And Keon Claire Joe is used to taking charges, able to fight one off there and get himself to the foul line. Keon Claire Joe, 75% foul shooter. The Minutemen, 7 out of 10 tonight. No for the first one for Claire Joe. It doesn't really ring out from the stats for Claire Joe, the impact that he has when he's on the floor. Six points a game, a couple of rebounds per game, over 25 minutes per contest. He had six and the loss on Sunday against St. Louis. Here he hits the free throw. Got four today for Claire Joe. Back to a five-point lead here for the Minutemen. Away to Peary, and it's intercepted. Mitchell and Diallo on the steal. East surveying. 
Drives, nice dish to Diallo, who gets the bucket and the foul for Samba Diallo. Great recognition by Sean East. He was headed toward the basket, realized he was about to run himself right into a charge. As here he is hesitating, and there's the, the defender, Peary, stepping over, found the open. Diallo on the left side, and he gets the friendly roll, and Samba Diallo back in the double digits here today. Diallo had five points or fewer to close out the non-conference schedule the last six games. This is a, a critical juncture of this game if you're LaSalle. UMass has extended this lead to eight. And let's see if LaSalle is the counterpunch. If not, the Minutemen could have a shot here to really make this thing a bit more comfortable. And they haven't had any comfort, really, since the beginning of the season outside of that main game. Here's Dees. Dees misses the close one. Claire Joe can't get the loose ball, but Diallo steps over him. And UMass will look to extend their largest lead of the day. Cross-court pass to Pierre. Just taken away from a potential steal for Ray and a foul called on uh, Christian Ray out of Gap, Pennsylvania. Third team foul, second on Ray. LaSalle continues to guard these inbound plays hard. Let's see if UMass changes something up. It's the easy play there to East out on the left side. Ten to shoot here for the Minutemen. Not much movement for the Minutemen on offense this possession. Got to get one off here. Claire Joe up top to Mitchell. He'll take it with a shot clock expiring. Back of the rim, no good. Dees with a rebound. An opening for LaSalle. Up ahead to Ray. Cut off by Claire Joe. And Ray gets it into the post here for Croswell. Haven't seen him offensively a ton. Blocked by Mitchell and got a jump ball called. Looked a lot like that play in the first half. Mitchell had the ball, and they called the jump when it looked like he had gone up and down. But good defense by Trey, keeping Croswell pinned along that baseline and forcing him to take a tough shot. Croswell just could not gain any real estate, and he too looked like he went up and down. I didn't see he almost a any hand on top image of that, of that play we had before, right? Very much so. You now the rule is you have to have a hand on the basketball when the offensive player comes down, but it looked like he just came down on his own. Roswell has been shut down so far today. A 6-0 run here for the Minutemen. Been a little careless with the basketball at times. LaSalle has been suffocating defensively, guarding the ball. And Mitchell draws a foul on Croswell on the entry pass. And that's going to be the third foul on Ed Croswell. That will also bring us to our first media timeout of half number two. 15-53 to go. Minutemen enjoying an eight-point lead with the basketball. When we return here on the UMass Sports Network. For the Minutemen. Santos open for three. He'll take it, and he hits it. Preston Santos from downtown. Guy who only averages about two points a game contributing coming off the bench. You see Coach McCall use it more and more as the season's gone along. He showed some confidence stepping into that shot. A guy that doesn't take a lot of long-distance shots for Santos. Just his third three-point make this season. Seven-point lead for UMass. LaSalle has utilized Beatty and Dees. And now Dees has this pass broken up, saved by Santos. One of those hustle plays that Coach McCall will talk about. UMass looking to get on a little bit of a run here. Santos, eh, not that time. Keep an eye on Mitchell. He's been real, very frustrated tonight with the physical attention he's been getting from LaSalle. This is as emotional as we've seen him all season. Yeah, indeed. Now Colton Mitchell saving that pass, falling down, and a twirling move from Trey Mitchell, and now he finally gets it to go his way. A good response out of the timeout, Jay, for the Minutemen going on a 5 nothing run. And Mitchell fighting through the... Contact and able to get the end one when we come back. So Mitchell with 13 to the free throw line. We'll step aside here with 11.42 to go in half number two. Trey Mitchell working his magic. Mass up by nine.
Uh, UMass up by nine, 59 to 50. Recent history, not great for the Minutemen under head coach Matt McCall. Sixth meeting for McCall against LaSalle. LaSalle won both games last season. I mentioned sort of the poor shooting at Tom Gola Arena. The last win, however, for the Minutemen over LaSalle is in that 8 10 tournament victory under Coach McCall. And these two teams will meet again, Jay. Could be a critical game in early March, the penultimate game of the regular season for the Minutemen down at Gola Arena. And, you know, it's just interesting how some teams, you know, LaSalle really struggled last year, just have your number, and that was the case last year. LaSalle got off to a horrendous start in the non conference schedule. It was 0 for 10 to start yes. the season. That qualifies as horrendous, and <laughs> they somehow got off to a pretty decent uh, conference schedule, a conference uh, result, and it started with that win over UMass. You can see Coach McCall and the band feeling it right now. Yeah, LaSalle actually won eight games in conference last year, Minutemen just four. So with what lies ahead, they would love to get this one, but this is a familiar position that they've been in, Mitchell to the free throw line. They have had leads late, or I should say halfway through second halves of games, but have not been able to close them out. And Mitchell converts on the three-point play. He's got 14. And the two big guys for LaSalle, Croswell and Kimbrough, both have four fouls. So let's see if the Minutemen continue to get Mitchell the ball. And as this game has gone along, he's really settled in and has done a nice job down low taking advantage of that mismatch. Yeah, LaSalle going small here. The D's at 6'6", the tallest man on the floor, and a foul before Hakeem can get to the lane. It's going to be on Pierre, his second. Third team foul, 17 fouls already for LaSalle. Ten-point advantage here for UMass. We talk about the height advantage the Minutemen have, that size advantage down low, but LaSalle has managed to get 26 points in the paint tonight, 26 of their 50, so just about half of their scoring. Yeah, they do have the size advantage when it comes to the guards. Six foot six for D's. Here's a foul on East, maybe a little bit late to the opinion of the fan base here. Sean East called for his third foul as Hakeem was falling backwards, the freshman from Washington, D.C. Vance thought Hakeem was going out of control on his own. He kind of pulled the rug out from under him, under him here. Yeah. There was, if they contact. had called this a reach, I could, you could have convinced me, but... And on the Late inbound, whistle. Dees can't hit the three on the putback. No for Spencer, and Mitchell keeps it alive for the rebound. An open look for Dees in the corner. Got to close the 10-point gap. UMass will try to extend it here. This is part of having a relatively young team. Jay is learning how to play with the lead and how to close out games. And that's, as you mentioned, something the Minutemen have struggled with. East in the paint. East left-hand floater, no. And particularly doing so in conference play where everything is magnified a little bit more. I'm going to try to slow things down. Here's Spencer. Baseline jumper for him. Rattles home. That was a junior move against the freshman guard right there. He got Mitchell overplaying him and created all sorts of space. Good move there. Spencer's up to nine points. It's an eight-point lead here for the Minutemen. Yeah, this feels like familiar territory for UMass. Mitchell, advantage through three defenders and gets the whistle from behind. Hakeem, I believe, calling for the hold. Ayinde Hakeem. He's averaging almost 20 points a game as a freshman for LaSalle. Mitchell back to the free throw line. The Minutemen have done a good job from the line today, 10 of 14. They've drawn eight fouls already against LaSalle, so they're already in the one and one. We're not even halfway through this second half, so those foul shots are going to be very important as the Minutemen try to grow this lead. Mitchell, two of three from the line, hits the first one. Really impressed with how we talked about this, how this part of his game has come along. So he's headed towards 70% as a foul shooter. And, you know, when he ends up in these situations, getting the ball a lot, facing a lot of contact down low, he's going to see himself at the foul line. And this is on the second one, D's with a rebound. LaSalle from long distance, 5 of 16. We have mentioned they have multiple guys that can hit from long range. Hakeem can't take it all the way, but he knocks it out of the hands of Mitchell. Trey Mitchell hits the deck. We've seen him do that time and time again. Keeps the possession for the Minutemen. Now he gets it back, and Mitchell tries to throw it down. Rattles down and out. And I felt that one turning the tide for the Minutemen. Now an opening yet again for LaSalle. Spencer. 
It's a shot you probably want him taking. Had an open look momentarily. And he said, without even hesitating, I don't worry about Carl. He's going to be fine and certainly has been fine for the Minutemen. 15.53 to go here in the second half. UMass up 49-41. to 41. And they'll get it into Trey Mitchell. Now with Croswell out of the game, let's see if they try to go back to feeding Mitchell down low. Pierre takes a three, and it's Yahtzee for Pierre. Or just give it to the guy with the hot hand, I guess. Five of a kind for Carl Pierre. Five for five from long distance. How do you guard that? Well, the Minutemen now have managed to stretch this out to an 11-point lead. Let's see how LaSalle responds, if they can respond. Beatty tries a corner three. That's no good. Gets his own miss and throws up a floater to go down. Great follow by Beatty, following that shot, getting that offensive rebound and the second-chance opportunity. He's done a nice job, too, up until that last possession on Pierre in the early going of this second half. He had been all over him, but... He got lost in the screen on that last three that Carl hit from about Worcester. And Kimbrough calling for the reach in. He picks up his third foul. So between Kimbrough and Croswell, really the two bigs that head coach Howard relies on. Just a couple of minutes, six for Croswell, a handful for Kimbrough. And here's Pierre, you know, saying, I just need to get one more off. It's feeling good tonight. And there was that screen by Samba Diallo on Beatty that freed him. That was a great screen. And that left Pierre obviously very wide open. But then BD comes down and gets his own miss and kind of prevents things from spiraling out of control for LaSalle. Turnover on UMass. Here's Dees. Dees, close shot over Pierre. That's no good. Claire Joe there to clean it up. And now Claire Joe's just going to take it all the way, and Claire Joe lays it in over the outstretched arms of Jared Kimbrough. Hard take for Claire Joe. I think it's the only kind of take he takes, if you'll pardon the expression. Always oh, seems like when he goes to the basket, he ends up on the deck. Does so indeed that time. A double-digit lead here for the Minutemen. And Sal really hasn't utilized D's as much here in the early goings of the second half. He'll try a three, a deep one at that, and he sinks it on cue. Yeah, Claire Joe are over on him. That's a big shot by Dees to get this thing back to eight points. And veteran player really performing well here tonight. A 15 and all for Dees. UMass goes to Mitchell. Mitchell gathers and can't lay it in. Got bumped from behind. No call. LaSalle the other way. An opening here for Dees. Tapped out from behind by Samba Diallo. It'll stay. Explores basketball. Go to Mitchell will check in. Claire Joe will get a breather. As you mentioned, Hitting the court hard on that last take. Here comes Colton. And being, having Colton Mitchell available again gives UMass another body, allows them to rotate minutes, you know, lessen things a little bit, gives a guy like Keon Claire Joe a rest when he adds to his collection of bruises. You know, Colton Mitchell almost feels like a younger Keon Claire Joe, the way they play. Very scrappy, yep. very sure handed with the basketball. Beatty at Mitchell, and Beatty lays it in. And LaSalle fighting back here on a 5 nothing run. A oh, three from D, excuse me, and then BD layup. Only six foot two, but not afraid to wander in and amongst the trees there. Great baseline drive by BD. The guards again starting to get going for LaSalle. It was 11 moments ago here for the Minutemen. Now a six point lead. 13 minutes to play here in the second half, and a whistle down low. Trey Mitchell and Kimbrough. I think we had a double foul called. They really were jostling, and Trey Mitchell, I think, was frustrated after that last possession where he ended up on the floor going to the basket, and they did call a double foul against Mitchell and Kimbrough, and that's Kimbrough's fourth, I believe. It is. It's Mitchell's second. Sometimes officials will go this route to try to send a message to the players. Sometimes talking to them won't do, and you just you call the double foul, and you know, nobody ends up being happy, but you send that message, and UMass will have 10 to shoot here after the double fouls. It's a point of interruption situation. Yeah, and well, again, LaSalle has been very good on defending that inbounds. East lost it, stolen by LaSalle. Beatty up ahead to Croswell. Croswell with the layup. A 7 nothing stretch here for LaSalle, and head coach Matt McCall has seen enough. Wants a timeout, an 11-point lead has dwindled to just four. So UMass will think it over as Croswell gets his first 
Best for Mitchell coming down the stretch. And keep in mind, as we mentioned, four fouls on Croswell and Kimbrough for Basal. One-armed rebound hoiked out of the air by Samba Diallo. And then scoreless over the last two minutes, 20 seconds. Under eight to play. Trying to get Debaji Walker involved in the offense, just not there. East dribbles it off his foot. Ten to shoot. East left wide open, parting of the seas. And there's a little floater from Sean East. Hasn't been the greatest game for Sean East, but there he's able to coax one down. Seven points for him, 63-55. Dees advantage over Baptiste and a hard take for Isaiah Dees. 18 points for Dees. can see the UMass athletic trainer, Dave McClutsky, working on Colton Mitchell in the upper right of your screen there. East takes a three. That's no good. Baptiste tries to save it right into the arms of Spencer. Launched up ahead for Ray. Open shooter, Hakeem, drives out to Dees. He'll take it. And Dees cannot convert to Baji Walker there to rip away the rebound. Yeah, Mitchell had that pass he tried to save in front of the VIP seats to our right. And hit the court hard. He's able to keep the ball in play. Hopefully he is all right. Looks like he's in some degree of pain yep. from where we're sitting. Here's the Baji Walker trying to go to work on D's. Nothing there. Ten to shoot. Six-point lead here for UMass. Had, Deba had Baptiste on the roll. Catches the pass. Three to shoot. And he gets bailed out on the foul by Saul Peary. Good grab from Baptiste. That has been his Achilles heel, is bringing those basketballs down. Couldn't finish the play, but he'll head to the line when we return. UMass up 63-57, 6.31 to go. Minutemen up 63-57. Let's talk about a couple of Mitchells here. First, Trey Mitchell and his ability to get to that 20-point mark. He had a career-high 24 against Yale. He's trying to get to that number today. So far, 15, Adam, for Trey Mitchell. Six out of 14, shooting three out of five from the foul line. He's played 27 minutes, so you wonder if the minutes are starting to catch up to him a little bit after logging better than 40 against St. Louis, but he's been great for the Minutemen, and it's been fun watching him develop, you know, watching him develop the post moves, watching him go against a veteran big man like Hassan French in St. Louis, and, uh, you know, it's pretty amazing to think about what the player he might be in another year or two, if not later on this year. And for the other Mitchell, Colton Mitchell getting 16 minutes today. There he is being worked on by Dave McCluskey, the athletic trainer, was wincing and reeling in pain, but like he's going to try to fight through this one. Four assists so far today for Colton Mitchell. Looks like he still may be in a little bit of discomfort as Jerry Baptiste will head to the foul line. Baptiste was fouled by Saul Peary heading into break. So two free throws for Missouri Baptiste. Five for 11 from the line so far this season. From within, 
within that area. And yeah. He's done a great job in a relatively short amount of time getting this LaSalle program back on its feet again. And just his second season, 20 and 25 so far for Coach Ashley Howard. And they've been trying to break up now a 7 nothing run yep. over the last couple of minutes. 7 nothing stretch for LaSalle. It was an 11-point lead, now down to 4 for the Minutemen. Santos open for three. He'll take it, and he hits it. Preston Santos from downtown. Guy who only averages about two points a game contributing coming off the bench. You see Coach McCall use it more and more as the season's gone along. He shows some confidence stepping into that shot. A guy that doesn't take a lot of long-distance shots for Santos. Just his third three-point make this season. Seven-point lead for UMass. LaSalle has utilized Beattie and Dees, and now Dees has this pass broken up, saved by Santos. One of those hustle plays that Coach McCall will talk about. UMass looking to get on a little bit of a run here. Santos. Eh, not that time. Keep an eye on Mitchell. He's been real, very frustrated tonight with the physical attention he's been getting from LaSalle. This is as emotional as we've seen him all season. Yeah, indeed. Now Colton Mitchell saving that pass. Falling down and a twirling move from Trey Mitchell, and now he finally gets it to go his way. A good response out of the timeout, Jay, for the Minutemen going on a 5 nothing run. And Mitchell fighting through the contact and able to get the end one when we come back. So Mitchell with 13 to the free throw line. One and one situation for Kenny, 74% free throw shooter. You know, LaSalle J has two very distinct benchmarks in terms of success. They hold their opponents below 70 points this season. They're 8-0. And, oh, and when they score more than 70, they're 8-1. and one. So things trending in UMass's direction, but still a lot of time left in this game. This one, you know, LaSalle just managed to hang around. UMass got that lead to 10 and 11 points, but... The Explorer is just able to stay within hailing distance here as Mitchell's back into the game for the Minutemen. And Kenny misses the second one. Yeah, the Minutemen averaging, allowing 72 points per contest, a bit high. Five and a half to go. And it's now a matter of have you learned from your past mistakes if you're UMass this season. You have to continue to attack. Claire Jo attacks from three, indeed. He's got nine and some separation here for UMass. Minutemen getting scoring from guys like Claire Joe and Diallo. You know, not always guys that you count on, but you've gotten a combined 19 points from those two tonight. Well, LaSalle hasn't unleashed Peary all that much today. Here's D. He's got his man up into the air, and are they going to count it? They are. D's having a monster game. He's up to 20 points today. Did a great job getting Pierre up in the air. And again, good patience. And they'll call that in the act of shooting. And just when you thought, again, Minutemen are going to try to generate that double-digit lead. Win over UMass. You see Coach McCall and the band feeling it right now. Yeah, LaSalle actually won eight games in conference last year. Minutemen just four. So with what lies ahead, they would love to get this one. But this is a familiar position that they've been in. Mitchell to the free throw line. They have had leads late, or I should say halfway through second halves of games, but have not been able to close them out. And Mitchell converts on the three-point play. He's got 14. And the two big guys for LaSalle, Croswell and Kimbrough, both have four fouls. So let's see if the Minutemen continue to get Mitchell the ball. And as this game has gone along, he's really settled in and has done a nice job down low taking advantage of that mismatch. Yeah, LaSalle going small here. The D's at 6'6", the tallest man on the floor, and a foul before Hakeem can get to the lane. It's going to be on Pierre, his second. Third team foul, 17 fouls already for LaSalle. Ten-point advantage here for UMass. We talk about the height advantage the Minutemen have, that size advantage down low, but LaSalle has managed to get 26 points in the paint tonight, 26 of their 50, so just about half of their scoring. Yeah, they do have the size advantage when it comes to the guards. Six foot six for D's. Here's a foul on East. Maybe a little bit late to the opinion of the fan base here. Sean East called for his third foul as Hakeem was falling backwards. The freshman from Washington, D.C. Dance thought Hakeem was going out of control on his own. 
kind of pulled the rug out from under him, under him here. Yeah. There was, they had called this a reach. I could, you could have convinced me, but. And on the inbound, whistle. Dees can't hit the three on the putback. No for Spencer. And Mitchell keeps it alive for the rebound. An open look for Dees in the corner. Got to close the 10 point gap. UMass will try to extend it here. This is part of having a relatively young team. Jay is learning how to play with the lead and how to close out games. And that's, as you mentioned, something the Minutemen have struggled with. East in the paint. East left hand floater. No. And particularly doing so in conference play where everything is magnified a little bit more. they got to try to slow things down. Here's Spencer. Baseline jumper for him. Rattles home. That was a junior move against a freshman guard right there. He got Mitchell overplaying him and created all sorts of space. Good move there. Spencer's up to nine points. It's an eight-point lead here for the Minutemen. Yeah, this feels like familiar territory for UMass. Mitchell. Advantage through three defenders and gets the whistle from behind. Hakeem, I believe, calling for the hold. Ayinde Hakeem. He's averaging almost 20 points a game as a freshman for LaSalle. Mitchell back to the free throw line. The Minutemen have done a good job from the line today. 10 of 14. They've drawn eight fouls already against LaSalle, so they're already in the one and one. We're not even halfway through this second half, so those foul shots are going to be very important as the Minutemen try to grow this lead. Mitchell, two of three from the line, hits the first one. Really impressed though with how we talked about this, how this part of his game has come along. So he's headed towards 70% as a foul shooter. And, you know, when he ends up in these situations, getting the ball a lot, facing a lot of contact down low, he's going to see himself at the foul line. And this is on the second one. Dees with a rebound. LaSalle from long distance. Five of 16. We have mentioned they have multiple guys that can hit from long range. Hakeem can't take it all the way, but he knocks it out of the hands of Mitchell. Trey Mitchell hits the deck. We've seen him do that time and time again. Keeps the possession for the Minutemen. Now he gets it back, and Mitchell tries to throw it down. Rattles down and out. Kind of felt that one turning the tide for the Minutemen. Now an opening yet again for LaSalle. Spencer. That's a shot you probably want him taking. Had an open look momentarily. 13 on the shot clock here for LaSalle. Now he takes this one from the left wing. Long rebound. Kept alive by Hakeem. Left elbow jumper. That's no good. Another offensive board. This is Ray underneath. Gets his own miss. Resetting the shot clock time and time again. Well, this will drive Matt McCall nuts, giving up multiple offensive rebounds like this. And LaSalle finally cashes in. The game with four points. And that's one of those plays where you're kind of sagging back defensively for so long. And have been never really boxed out nope. in that situation. Almost like a hockey power play. LaSalle pounded the rock finally and able to get one to go. And then hope to see a few of those power plays this weekend against Boston College. To Mitchell. His pass knocked away, stolen by Dees. Nice ball movement, Ray to the rack. Ray missed it. He gets it right back, falls on East. East tries a baseball pass that goes right into the arms of Dees. Now he launches a three. That's no good. East is finally able to secure the board here for UMass. See that the Minutemen try to settle this down a little bit, Jay. Kind of help your skeleton the last couple of minutes. Not the case here as East was thinking about there you go. Charging, okay. This is what they kind of had a couple of moments like this against St. Louis where they didn't take the time allotted. The game on the line. Pierre, baseline. His shot no good. There comes LaSalle. Hakeem finds Dees. Dees gets bumped by Mitchell and will head to the free throw line. Dees, such a slasher in, the, in every positive sense of the term. Not afraid to go low. Great ball control. You see the dish off here. And Dees just sitting there. Knew that he had this position on his defender. And Mitchell forearmed to right in the back. Veteran play there by Dees. Just be patient. Take the contact. And that's almost a 73% foul shooter. Get himself to the line. As Sal gets the opportunity to score here. Still a lot of time left. Score without the clock running. Dees hits the first one. Not a lot Mitchell could have done in that situation trying to get back 
on the play. Debaji Walker, Jerry Baptiste will check into the game along with Keon Clairjo. So with three fouls on Mitchell, and the men will have to adjust their game plan here offensively. Doing it again near a media timeout zone. Try to extend that rest for Mitchell coming down the stretch. And keep in mind, as we mentioned, four fouls on Croswell and Kimbrough for LaSalle. One-armed rebound hoiked out of the air by Samba Diallo. Miniman scoreless over the last two minutes, 20 seconds. Under eight to play. Trying to get Devonji Walker involved in the offense, just not there. East dribbles it off his foot. Ten to shoot. East left wide open, parting of the seas. And there's a little floater from Sean East. Hasn't been the greatest game for Sean East, but there he's able to coax one down. Seven points for him, 63-55. Dees advantage over Baptiste and a hard take for Isaiah Dees. 18 points for Dees. Could see the UMass athletic trainer Dave McClutsky working on Colton Mitchell in the upper right of your screen there. East takes a three. That's no good. Baptiste tries to save it right into the arms of Spencer. Launched up ahead for Ray. Open shooter, Hakeem, drives out to Dees. He'll take it. And Dees cannot convert to Baji Walker there to rip away the rebound. Yeah, Mitchell had that pass he tried to save in front of the VIP seats to our right. And hit the court hard. He's able to keep the ball in play. Hopefully he is all right. Looks like he's in some degree of pain yep. from where we're sitting. Here's the Baji Walker trying to go to work on Dees. Nothing there. Ten to shoot. Six-point lead here for UMass. Had, to buy, had Baptiste on the roll, catches the pass, three to shoot, and he gets bailed out on the foul by Saul Peary. Good grab from Baptiste. That has been his Achilles heel, is bringing those basketballs down. Couldn't finish the play, but he'll head to the line when we return. UMass up 63 57. Uh, how about an improved A-10 this year from a year ago? Every game a battle. You can see LaSalle on the horizon. They've got Mason, a road game at Rhodey. He's gone through a bit of a funk. A very good Richmond team who most likely will be on the bubble. VCU, St. Louis could be tournament teams as well. So the road ahead for LaSalle, a difficult one. And you could probably say the same if you're the Minutemen who have to travel to Dayton. And this upcoming weekend, top 15 team in the country. Which, oh, by the way, has a whole week off to get ready for the Minutemen. I think they're watching this game right now. I think Obi, Hi, Obi Toppin is sitting <laughs> somewhere with a bucket of popcorn. Probably. Then St. Bonaventure, which is going to be in Rochester, actually. Which is a huge break, yeah. I think. You've never been to the Riley Center. Uh, but I, that, I, that place is a tinderbox. I and, dodged that bullet. And uh, the fans there are among the best in the Atlantic 10, one of the better atmospheres in the Atlantic 10. And then things get a little bit more manageable against the Georges, perhaps. And then there's Duquesne, who's leading heavily tonight in their game. Duquesne is a quadrant one team right now. Yeah. Tavian Dunmartin did the Minutemen in last year. They're all over St. Joe's uh -huh. late in the second half of their game tonight. First free throw for Mitchell is good. And by the way, as we shift our attention back to this game, tight one here from Amherst. Mitchell misses on the second one. He's got 18 points so far today. Six-point lead for the Minutemen. B 
Beattie in the paint over Pierre. That's no good. Diallo with another board for UMass. Samba Diallo, 10 points to go with 10 rebounds now. 11 points to go with 10 rebounds. So another back-to-back -back double doubles for Samba Diallo. I like to see that for Samba. UMass will try to take advantage here with a six-point lead. Tough pass to Pierre, and he draws the foul on Peary. So Peary picks up his third. That is the 10th team foul on the Sal. So you got two free throws coming up for arguably your best free throw shooter. Well, 89% is pretty darn good for the junior from Boston as Carl Pierre hits the foul line of 19 points. And did a nice job really in that pass. Tucked away in the corner, able to pull that in and draw the contact. 20 points today for Carl Pierre. Clearly, this is going to be part of closing this game out for the UMass Minimes, making these foul shots, something they've struggled coming down the stretch yep. with at times in the close games they have played. As you mentioned, did a good job against St. Louis. Minimen with 18 fouls. Pierre misses on the second one, so. Some daylight here for LaSalle, and East deflects it out of bounds. With 24 on the shot clock, just over three to go. And LaSalle only has four seconds to get out of their backcourt. Rule change recently. Used to give you back to the full 10 seconds, but no more. They were able to get in, though, in the front court pretty easily. Trying to speed up the game. And the focal point. Good defense from Diallo here on Dees, and Dees gets the whistle. Samba saying, I went straight up. He's saying, no, you reached over. Second foul on Samba Diallo. Ninth team foul for the Minutemen, and Dees will head to the free throw line. Well, clearly, LaSalle's put the ball in the game in Dees' hands coming down the stretch. Why not the night that he's had? Samba Diallo said he had his arms up. And looked like he did. Samba, not a whole lot of contact with the body. He got the hands up. Maybe a late whistle, perhaps. And he did have his hands down prior to the foul being called, but... Looked like pretty good defense eventually, just before Dees put it up. The South just won't go away. Scrappy. They're going to be a tough out in the Atlantic yep. 10 this year, Jay. Well, they were last year. One out of two on each side for Mitchell and Dees. And the minimum will try to chew it up a little bit more. And we talked with head coach Matt McCall about these situations the other day and saying we need to learn how to execute and close out. Not there, Diallo with the offensive board and he draws the foul. How about the effort on the man from Senegal, Diallo. Picking up his 12th rebound, flying in. Claire Joe took that three kind of early in the sequence and here he is guarding in unimpeded and able to get himself back to the foul line. Number five, Samba Diallo, Diallo, four for four from the charity stripe here today. Samba's host mom is in attendance today. I was able to talk with her about his journey over from Senegal and the eighth grade level. Certainly stronger than he was last yep. year. And of course, don't forget, he was coming off an injury. He didn't play at all, I believe, his senior year of high school. And, you know, that's a tough transition to make from that into... Division one college basketball, but it's really been fun watching him blossom this year as Pierre steals it away. And now Diallo had it momentarily, and it's out of bounds out of UMass basketball. Yeah, actually, most mother Terry was telling me that Samba blew out his knee his senior season, and he wanted all the coaches, especially a lot that were recruiting him in the A-10, to know that he had an injury. And he called each and every one of them after the injury, and he said, you know, head coach Matt McCall was really the only one that said, hey, don't worry about it. We're going to get you through this. We want you to be a part of the Massachusetts program. And here he is blossoming as a sophomore. Miniman try to close this one out up 72-65, just over two to go. Ten, second ten call. seconds in the backcourt. So the Miniman had call and pray to some very aggressive defense by LaSalle tonight. They had a five-second call, unable to get the ball in, and now a 10-second backcourt call. And that's not the first time they got close to that mark here tonight. And if I'm watching this on tape, the past couple of games, UMass has had a hard time dealing with pressure. That's something they might see more of as teams take a look at this video. Here's Beattie on Claire Joe and an offensive foul called Keon Claire Joe. Guys, can we bring it up? How about the charge counter for Keon Claire Joe? That is, count them. 15 charges 
taken by Keon Claire Joe. He'll shake it off and looks like he wore that one over. right on the there right you hip. You're proud of that graphic, <laughs> I know. And Keon Claire Joe is too, as he took that shoulder right in the chest. Here he is, Keon Claire Joe against Beatty. Got mm. right there and took it. Solid shot and then fell hard going back. <laughs> the faces of Claire Joe, you could do a whole mural on him. How many pounds of ice does he go through after a game? He is tough as nails. Minutemen get it across this time. To Claire Joe from the corner for three. Croswell with the rebound and opening here for LaSalle. In transition, Ray for the triple. That's no good. Clergeau with the rebound, and this time he's able to get it away. Shades of Sunday against St. Louis. Last couple of possessions, Minutemen have settled for early three-pointers, and now Sean. Four assists so far today for Colton Mitchell. Looks like he still may be in a little bit of discomfort as Jerry Baptiste will head to the foul line. Baptiste was fouled by Saul Peary heading into break, so two free throws for Missouri Baptiste. He's 5 for 11 from the line so far this season. Not his milieu, but can hit a free throw from time to time. Maddie hits on the first one. Guy averaging just over 11 minutes a game. Baptiste can do a lot on the defensive end. You must bring Pierre in here and take out Tabaji Walker. It's going to be a game this season where Baptiste has 10 points, 8 or 9 rebounds. I mean, he has that ability, especially with that size advantage here. Can't convert on the second free throw. Hakeem stepping through the lane, swatted by Baptiste. Loose ball, tracked down by LaSalle. Huge block for DeJury Baptiste. Another opportunity for the Explorers with just over six to go. More urgency in their offensive set here. A little bit more energy. And to the post mismatch here. Stone on Claire Joe. East hedging. Claire Joe trying to battle and he's calling for the foul. As he reached in, he was being backed down by Brandon Stone. Well, Jerry Baptiste averaging better than a block a game. And those long arms, it doesn't matter if he gives up a little bit of inside position. He's able to come over and just swap that one away from the freshman stone. Almost as you drew it up. Obviously, you would like the ball to bounce back to your team and then create a breakaway. Not the case there for Baptiste. But that's what Baptiste no. does. He's you know kind of a defense or offense guy with Mitchell. But he'll give you four or five good minutes in a row. He'll block shots. He'll rebound. Keon Clergeau went for the steal there. Spencer open from three. Airballed it. Diallo awaiting on the other side. East up ahead. Man behind him. And East lost it. Kept alive by LaSalle and Claire Joe right into the arms of Peary. And Diallo goes in for the steal. He's called for the foul. Sharif Kenny. Well, both of these teams have gone cold from the field, Jay. UMass is one for their last five. LaSalle one for their last six. Diallo almost had most of the basketball there, in fact. Kenny looked like he gave it the pretty good sell he job sure there. sure did. Breathing in pain as he hits the court. One and one situation for Kenny, 74% free throw shooter. You know, LaSalle, Jay, has two very distinct benchmarks in terms of success. They hold their opponents below 70 points this season. They're 8-0. And, oh, and when they score more than 70, they're 8-1. and one. So things trending in UMass's direction, but still a lot of time left in this game. This one, you know, LaSalle just managed to hang around. UMass got that lead to 10 and 11 points, but the Explorer is just able to stay within hailing distance here as Mitchell's back into the game for the Minutemen. Yeah, Kenny misses the second one. Yeah, the Minutemen averaging... Allowing 72 points per contest, a bit high. Five and a half to go. And it's now a matter of have you learned from your past mistakes if you're UMass this season? You have to continue to attack. Claire Joe attacks from three, indeed. Well, He's got nine and some separation here for UMass. Then about getting scoring from guys like Claire Joe and Diallo. You know, not always guys that you count on, but you've gotten a combined 19 points from those two tonight. And LaSalle hasn't unleashed Peary all that much today. Here's D. He's got his man up into the air, and are they going to count it? They are. 
D's having a monster game. He's up to 20 points today. Did a great job getting Pierre up in the air. And again, good patience. And they'll call that in the act of shooting. And just when you thought, again, when the men are going to try to generate that double-digit lead, here comes LaSalle right back. D's to the line. Had a career-high 31 points earlier this season against Morgan State in a game where he scored 17 consecutive for the Explorers. He converts on the three-point play to nullify the three from Claire Joe moments ago. And here's that urgency from LaSalle that you talked about. And him been able to get it across to East, trapped in the backcourt, fearing some issues here. And Pierre can't handle and is saying it was it's over and back. back by Claire Joe couldn't secure it and that was just a risky pass a desperation play here for the Minutemen they were getting near the 10 second limit is what yep. happened and there's a forced pass and Pierre claimed that it was Beatty that deflected it into the backcourt but it looked like in the replay it was Carl good job by LaSalle creating that turnover catching UMass a little off guard with that heavy press Dees takes a three Dees sinks it and he brings LaSalle back from the brink. Three-point game. It's time the Minutemen able to beat the press here into the corner. Pierre. Four and a half to go. Down to Mitchell. Lob and a tip in. You'll take it. He wanted a hammer at home. He just touches it in. He's got 17. Mitchell improvised there. Looked like he did want to slam it home. But just directed it softly into the basket. Five assists today for Sean East. Seems like he figures in a lot of that UMass offense, whether he's scoring, Jay, or dishing it out. No, without a doubt. Four minutes to go here inside the Mullen Center. LaSalle in fighting mode. Beatty takes a three. He bricks it. Diallo with a rebound. He's got ten boards today. Coach Matt McCall put up the stop sign, but he's ran right through it. And Mitchell gets fouled by Peary. Yeah, that's one of those moments. You want to slow it down here. With the lead, the momentum, Peary has his second foul. Mitchell hit hard as he hits the court, and he'll head to the free throw line when we return. Minutemen trying to hang on, up by five. And you had the nine-point lead at half against St. John's, couldn't close that one out. I think the one that really got away was the lead you had late against Yale in the final two minutes, couldn't hang on to that one. This, a little bit more of a cushion for UMass, but still you had the 10 second violation in the backcourt. You had the press, the press create a couple of turnovers for LaSalle. And are you going to see that again coming out of this timeout, you would assume? And looking at it from the big picture, of course, this is a huge game for UMass. You know, you want to be one and one going in the date. That's going to be a real challenge. You have to go play a St. Bonaventure team. It looks like they're going to be tough on the road after that. You know, you lose this game, 0 and 4 becomes a distinct possibility, and that's going to be really put UMass obviously behind the eight ball in league play but one and one it's not just about the record it's about feeling better about yourself and earning a who's leading heavily tonight in their game Duquesne is a quadrant one team right now yeah Tavian Dunmartin did the Minutemen in last year they're all over St. Joe's uh -huh. late in the second half of their game tonight first free throw for Mitchell is good and by the way as we shift our attention back to this game tight one here from Amherst. Mitchell misses on the second one. He's got 18 points so far today. Six point lead for the Minutemen. Beatty in the paint over Pierre. That's no good. Diallo with another board for UMass. Samba Diallo. 10 points to go with 10 rebounds now. 11 points to go with 10 rebounds. So another back-to-back -back double doubles for Samba Diallo. I'd like to see that for Samba. UMass will try to take advantage here with a six-point lead. Tough pass to Pierre, and he draws the foul on Peary. So Peary picks up his third. That is the 10th team foul on the Sal. So you got two free throws coming up for arguably your best free throw shooter. Well, 89% is pretty darn good for the Junior from Boston as Carl Pierre hits the foul line of 19 points. And did a nice job really in that pass. Tucked away in the corner, able to pull that in and draw the contact. 20 points today 
for Carl Pierre. Clearly, this is going to be part of closing this game out for the UMass Minimes, making these foul shots, something they've struggled coming down the stretch yep. with at times in the close games they have played. As you mentioned, did a good job against St. Louis. Minimen with 18 fouls. Pierre misses on the second one, so... Some daylight here for LaSalle, and East deflects it out of bounds. A 24 on the shot clock, just over three to go. And LaSalle only has four seconds to get out of their backcourt. Rule change recently. Used to give you back to the full 10 seconds, but no more. They were able to get in, though, in the front court pretty easily. Trying to speed up the game. And the focal point. Good defense from Diallo here on Dees, and Dees gets the whistle. Samba saying, I went straight up. He's saying, no, you reached over. Second foul on Samba Diallo. Ninth team foul for the Minutemen, and Dees will head to the free throw line. Well, clearly, LaSalle's put the ball in the game in Dees' hands coming down the stretch. Why not the night that he's had? Samba Diallo said he had his arms up. And looked like he did. Samba, not a whole lot of contact with the body. He got the hands up. Maybe a late whistle, perhaps, and he did have his hands down prior to the foul being called, but looked like pretty good defense eventually just before Dees put it up. The South just won't go away. Scrappy. They're going to be a tough out in the Atlantic yep. 10 this year, Jay. Well, they were last year. One out of two on each side for Mitchell and Dees. And the minimum will try to chew it up a little bit more. And we talked with head coach Matt McCall about these situations the other day and saying we need to learn how to execute and close out. Not there. Diallo with the offensive board, and he draws the foul. How about the effort on the man from Senegal? Diallo. Picking up his 12th rebound, flying in. Claire Joe took that three kind of early in the sequence. And here he is guarding in unimpeded. And able to get himself back to the foul line. Number five, Samba Diallo, Samba four for four from the charity stripe here today. Samba's host mom is in attendance today. and was able to talk with her about his journey over from Senegal and the eighth grade level. Certainly stronger than he was last yep. year. Of course, don't forget, he was coming off an injury. He didn't play at all, I believe, his senior year of high school. And, you know, that's a tough transition to make from that into... Division one college basketball, but it's really been fun watching him blossom this year as Pierre steals it away. And now Diallo had it momentarily, and it's out of bounds out of the UMass basketball. Yeah, actually, most mother Terry was telling me that Samba blew out his knee his senior season, and he wanted all the coaches, especially a lot that were recruiting him in the A-10, to know that he had an injury. And he called each and every one of them after the injury, and he said, you know, head coach Matt McCall was really the only one that said, hey, don't worry about it. We're going to get you through this. We want you to be a part of the Massachusetts program. And here he is blossoming as a sophomore. Miniman try to close this one out up 72-65, just over two to go. Ten second Ten call. seconds in the backcourt. So the Minutemen have fallen prey to some very aggressive defense by LaSalle tonight. They had a five-second call, unable to get the ball in, and now a 10-second backcourt call. And that's not the first time they got close to that mark here tonight. And if I'm watching this on tape the past couple of the games, UMass has had a hard time dealing with pressure. That's something they might see more of as teams take a look at this video. Here's Beattie on Claire Joe and an offensive foul called. Keon Clairejo. Guys, can we bring it up? How about the charge counter for Keon Clairejo? That is, count them, 15 charges taken by Keon Clairejo. He'll shake it off and... Looks like he wore that one right over. on the right you hip. You're proud of that graphic, I know. And Keon Clairejo <laughs> is, too, as he took that shoulder right in the chest. Here he is. Keon Clairejo against Beatty. Got right there and took a solid shot and then fell hard going back. <laughs> the faces of Claire Joe. You could do a whole mural on him. How many pounds of ice does he go through after a game? He is tough as nails. Minutemen get it across this time. To Claire Joe from the corner for three. Roswell with the rebound and opening here for LaSalle. 
In transition, Ray for the triple. That's no good. Clergeau with the rebound, and this time he's able to get it away. Shades of Sunday against St. Louis. Last couple of possessions, Minutemen have settled for early three-pointers, and now Sean East is going to back this out. Let's see him put the ball maybe in Mitchell's hands. No. Let East go all the way to the rim and can't get it to fall. Three empty possessions coming down the stretch. Last 90 seconds. Mitchell on the block and a foul called on Trey Mitchell. Nope, it's going to be on Sean East to be his fourth. And once again, Isaiah Dees, the senior out of Brooklyn, New York, will head to the free throw line. LaSalle, 9 out of 13 from the foul line tonight. D's seven out of nine, so he's accounted for most of them. Yeah, he's done his job today. Twenty-five points for D's. And once again in this game, Matt McCall riding his starters just like he did the second half in overtime of that St. Louis game. All of them have twenty-nine or more minutes logged so far as the first foul shot is missed. That was a huge miss for D's. And this feels just like you know the Minutemen playing. You're almost in that mode where you're playing not to lose as opposed to trying to win. It's not really an aggressive approach. Right. And again, these are the points of emphasis for the Minutemen. And a young team down the stretch. Dees misses them both. Kimbrough knocks it out of bounds, and it'll be UMass basketball. I think they got the call right there. Yeah, the baseline official didn't get a Crawford, didn't get a good look at it. Lamar Simpson, the trail, able to help him out. You know, that's going to have to negotiate this press again. East back to Diallo and UMass turns it over. Dees with the layup, but I'll wave it off. Foul on Samba before the shot from Dees. So two free throws coming up here for Christian Ray. Player Joe really having difficulty moving around after he took that charge a few moments ago. Jay, real hitch in his step. And LaSalle getting a lot of foul shots here coming down the stretch. 77% free throw shooter, Christian Ray. The Haverford School. I wonder if Matt McCall might use a timeout here to try to settle down the troops. Uh, they've had some empty possessions inside the last couple of minutes. LaSalle's been able to get themselves to the foul line. And the Explorers, as there is the timeout by Coach there McCall. Go. I think it is a good decision. Settle this young team down. Run your best play right here as he gets that big board out. We'll, we'll say this. You know, I think you're still dealing with some of the team learning from their mistakes, learning from those lessons. And, you know, I, I, you know, they've been so resilient, Jay, but a loss like this, if it were to happen, you know, that really could shatter a lot of that confidence. So let's see here. Try to get the ball maybe in the Pierre's hands or in the East's hands. Four fouls on Sean East. Again, having a hard time getting it across. Got to be quick. Claire Joe, three seconds to get it over. They do to East. Just over a minute to play. LaSalle really extending that defense even in the half court now. Coach McCall saying, hey, let's take this puppy down to the wire. Claire Joe guarded by Ray. Here comes the screen from Mitchell. Rolls, nothing there. Claire Joe drives, draws some contact. His shot contested, doesn't fall. And now Ray will throw it away when Hakeem was zigging, when Ray thought he was going to zag. And UMass will certainly take the turnover. 15th of the night for LaSalle, and it was an unforced error a situation where LaSalle just couldn't afford one. Miniman have struggled with turnovers as well, 17 as the Explorers call timeout. Yeah, talk about some of these stats that we were looking at to begin the game. LaSalle, one of the best teams in terms of defending the three. Well, a lot of that has to do with coming down. Miniman need to recognize now the ball in the backcourt. They still have 30 seconds to get it over. Take their time. Don't have to panic here. Don't believe LaSalle's in the mode to foul quite yet, but it's getting pretty close. Both we'll teams see. with 10 fouls. Minutemen do indeed get it into East. They and are going to foul. East, it's knocked down by Peary. I'm not sure if that was the intent from Saul Peary. Picks up his fourth foul. You'll send East, a 78% free throw shooter, to the line. And LaSalle now is showing they're going to try to milk every last moment out of this 46.8 seconds trying to extend this game as long as they can by fouling so early there. You know, UMass has gone cold from the field here coming down the stretch. They haven't scored in the last minute and 45 seconds. A little surprised they would go to the foul so soon there, but 
You think you get a stop and then hit a three, and then you go into the foul mode. East hits the first one. But then there's the other school where you just try to extend the game as long yeah. as you can and give your team life. But as long as the Minutemen keep doing what Sean East just did, make their foul shots, you know, they can, they'll be all right in this thing. Now, UMass has a team 68% free throw shooting club, but as we've outlined here, different from where they were at the beginning of the season. They've got their some of their best free throw shooters on the floor. Pierre with a deflection. Deep three for Peary to keep it alive. No offensive board for Beatty. Hoisted up by Dees. Another offensive rebound. Hakeem. 30 seconds left. Beatty open for the triple. He'll take it. That's an ugly one. Mitchell with a rebound and a foul coming on Hakeem. Should ice it for the Minutemen with 25. Point two seconds left. Fans liking what they're seeing here. Oh, the Minutemen on the precipice of going six and two at the Mullen Center this year. And like you're two Trey Mitchell foul shots away from that happening. He had the five and zero oh start to the season. He then went on a run of playing six consecutive teams in the top 100. Couldn't pull out a win there. Interest waning and now waxing here as Mitchell. Misses on the free throw. Trying to kind of turn the page for this program. And this I feel like a big win here for UMass if they can pull it out. And Mitchell up to 20. Nope, sorry, 19 points. I want to give him 20. One shy, 22 seconds to go. Hakeem all the way will roll it in. And a timeout called by Ashley Howard. Not done yet. 19.9 seconds left. Must admit, I looking back at it, Jay, when LaSalle fouled there the first time, probably won the five for five for Carl Pierre. He reached a thousand points with a second ticking off the clock in the end of the first half. Samba Diallo, consecutive double doubles here for the Minutemen. He has been a factor 12 and 12 for Samba. And UMass trying to figure out how to deal with this pressure has been a bit of an issue. Into East. East almost stepped out of bounds, but he gets. The foul on Peary, going to be his fifth, and Saul Peary, not the game he had a year ago when he had 20 points, four or five from long distance against the Minutemen. Peary is out just five points today. Minutemen have done a good job getting that scoring from Diallo and Claire Joe. East only nine points, which is below his average at 12 and certainly isn't uh, doesn't go along with the tear that he's been on. But LaSalle, to their credit, you know, they've really done a nice job making him work hard as a distributor and not giving him the open shots, uh, particularly when he likes to drive so much. And East gets the free throw. Gets himself the double figures yep. with that one. Minutemen with a lot of young guys out there coming down the stretch, finding a way to get themselves what appears to be their first conference victory as East hits them both in a big spot. 11 points for East to go along with his five assists. 15 seconds left in this one. Beatty got Mitchell up into the air. Beatty takes the three, airballed it. Diallo on the other side, and he can't corral it. Not through yet here for the Sal with just under 10 seconds to go. Well, Trey Mitchell trying to close out on that three-point shot when flying into the seats. At least he didn't fly into the shooter if you're a oh. UMass fan. That would have been disaster. Thought he was going to from our angle, but luckily he was able to veer off to the right. They throw it off the back of Pierre. What a move for Dees. Dees can't finish it, though, on the putback. Kimbrough doesn't go, and it'll be UMass basketball with 3.8 seconds. Pierre's back was turned. Dees threw it off the numbers. Got it back. Couldn't close. And the Minutemen feeling their first conference victory here in 2020. 77-69. East will dribble it out, and UMass gets the W here. Avenging a pair of losses a year ago against LaSalle wasn't easy, but they're able to get it to the finish line this time around. 77 to 69. A hallmark day here in Amherst. 20 points for Carl 